Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Uh, join the affordable e-bike revolution. Go to electricebikes.com and use code Nate to get a free foldable mountain bike lock with any bike purchase. That is a free bike lock when you use code Nate at L E C T R I C. So it's like, you know, electric. L E C T R I C E B I K E S. Electric ebikes.com. Also, uh, shout out to a sponsor from the makers of Helix, the most comfortable mattress ever. Comes all form. Uh, you can assemble all the furniture yourself in minutes. No tools needed. Right now, all form is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. That is 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That is athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Thank you to Viore for sponsoring Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. And finally, managing money can be hard and juggling subscriptions even harder. Never pay for an unwanted subscription again with Truebill. Go to truebill.com slash Nate. It could save you thousands a year. Let's go, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast, as I said before. Uh, we are here, uh, me, uh, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber. We have Dustin Chafin with us. He's back. Hey. Uh, me and him are on the road. We just got back from uh, somewhere, Tam- no, Tampa, <laughs> Tampa, Florida, Orlando, Orlando, Fort Myers, Fort, Fort Myers. Lauderdale, and then we're heading up to uh, next week, Providence, Port Chester. Huntington, all around man. Albany, Albany, yeah, and so uh, yeah, so we have a yeah, big little run, and then L.A. If you if you didn't get to come to the first L.A. show, I'll be back there for the uh, Netflix is a joke festival. I got a show May third. There's a few tickets left for that, so uh, but that's where we've been. And then what? So what about where are y'all? Well, I was uh, I came to your Becky Young. Oh yes, taping yes at Zany's, and that was great. Yeah. The Vecchio taping was great. The crowd was awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people listening to this podcast came, and people were just so supportive, and it was so cool to see because it's like this thing that I want to try to create. It's nice to see people like help us, and that was a big help. I mean, people come because they know who Mike is. Mike destroyed. I mean, it was wild. Like he did. It went as good as it could go, and uh, I directed. Whatever that was, <laughs> uh, I think I liked it. I, I liked saw you it. Back yeah, there. I was directing. Did you tell me what yeah. shirt it's to like, wear and stuff. Yeah, well, it was like go, you like you're almost like uh, I'm probably there's probably more you're supposed to do as a director, but for my directing of it was like you know think of the opening like helping with it. We designed the set like uh, some lo- locations of cameras and but the 800 pound grill they're so great and then they know how to like call the cameras like let's go tight shot on this like i don't know that stuff uh so i let them i was like y'all do that i don't want to be uh you know a cowboy shot that's a big one never heard of that that. haven't either so the point it's a shot it's uh it means you're shooting like below the kneecaps and then uh up above your head and so it was made for like cowboy movies if they were like doing a draw Mm -hmm. and you want to be able to get the whole gun coming out so they called a cowboy shot. Okay. Shoot your gun. So we got a few cowboy shots in the special. We got a few co- cowboy shots. I kept saying the hero shot. <laughs> I've only heard that. I don't know what that is yeah, yeah. either. <laughs> it was a shot of you in the yeah, green room. I get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, hero That's shot. Awesome. Number four. <laughs> I go, this camera's for the hero shot. They're like, where's it going to go? It'll be right next to me. <laughs> and I'm going to go to it a lot. Uh, but it was, spe- I can't wait for uh, everybody to see it. Uh, it really was great. And it's just, you know, clean. And it's it's the clean that we want to do. Clean that you don't know it's clean. Mm-hmm. And that's what uh, Mike did. And that's what it was. And it was awesome. And so, yeah, thanks again for everybody that came out to that 800-pound gorilla. 
the me and Dustin were together. We he murdered all week. Thank you. Buddy. And then uh, we've been hanging out, had a lot of fun. And then where were you? What'd I you was mean? in town all week for the festival. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The Nashville Comedy Festival was this whole week. Yeah, it just wrapped up. Saw you at the Ryman mm-hmm. at Arch Fear show. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. They uh, I was announced on that show. Then they they said I can't be. <laughs> because I was with, uh, you know, like like everybody at home, the list. We all have our friends that are, you know, probably going to hell. And <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you saved me. I, yeah, I saved us. Dustin, Dustin's <laughs> where he's he's heading up. He's got to come with me, but he's uh, when That's I go, whole, I'm gonna make him go with me. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of Nate Land Productions, right? Yeah, you save one of your friends yeah. one at a time. Just one. I walk in, I go, yeah, I do it to Jesus. I got a couple buddies with me, <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, yeah. Watch yeah, the buddy. special. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was there. A couple of like, no, 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 no. And I like, oh, yeah, we tried. I got tried. No, it's uh, they're uh. I mean, all these guys are some of my best friends, and yeah. they're uh, and that's what I love. Is that's the point of all this too? Is you have friends. No one's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's like you're trying to build this not perfect world of just being. Yeah, some of my friends are crazy. Yeah, and they do crazy stuff, and <laughs> I would do anything for them. And some of them are not, and some of them are living life the best way you could live life, and you should be mixing with all of them, yeah, and yeah. you just be. It's like family. It's yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot. We all got a crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a. But weird that art show, yeah. my agents got there like you can't have your name on. It. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and it's not because like I can't like it was like they didn't want people to come, you know, because people might come and they don't know and they think yeah. oh I'm going to this neighbor Yeti show and they don't realize like every other story that these guys go tell is going to be very very. very it dirty. was very funny the way Ari addressed it up top. Yeah, yeah. He's like, if you don't want it, yeah, if you came here for that, you can get your money back. Like, like, yeah, I'll give you five out. minutes to leave right yeah, now. Five minutes to leave, and <laughs> and uh, you know, it was, and it, he really and he means it in a good-hearted yeah, way of just yeah. being like, we understand, like, yeah, if you bought this and you thought this was gonna be the one thing, it's not. And uh, I mean, my part was still clean, but it's there. Uh, but yeah, they, and they're all funny stories, and it's all it's all great, buddy. So it was fun. The Nashville Festival was great. You know, and it's doing great. Well, one thing, it's like I saw Gaffigan. He did like Skank Fest. And yeah. It was interesting where he just did, you know, a clean Gaffigan act. And I think the audience that was there for that edgy comedy, they went on board. And that's the oh, thing, yeah. too. It's like he converted them to like his style of comedy. They just want good great. comedy. Yeah. And that's what you want is like they're down. Like the, all the times I've done, uh, yeah, it's called Skank Fest. So <laughs> they're, they're, you we probably have to bleep that. No, Sorry, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> it's like, but it's a it's our buddies Luis J Gomez. He started this whole thing. Uh, you know, Christine, Rebecca, Trent, like so. And it's uh, it's a wild thing. But that there's the most love I've felt in that festival than a lot than outside of a lot of festivals. And it's people that like I would always. I came up. I was doing all those shows that were dirty. I was doing all that stuff that was all this edgy stuff. And everybody would just embrace it. They're like, yeah, Nate's clean. Like we don't. We just want funny. We don't care. Those are the least judgmental people, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then it's kind of the ones that want everything to be politically wrecked. That's the most judgmental, yeah. and they don't want anything out like that. His the group that goes to that is, it's people coming from all walks of life, and they're just the nicest. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see that. Like when I, when Gaffigan went up, they like they love. It's like. They can't believe Gaffigan's here. And yeah. then they, you know, so it's fun. And that's what we were talking this weekend, you know, just talking about some of your fans have probably been through some stuff. So it's yeah. like they might have a neck tattoo, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we would see a couple of times when we were driving uh, to get to the venue, we would have to drive in front of it, yeah. and which was kind of cool because you get to see oh, the crowd great. go in. So cool. And it is like you always just sit there and you're like, I, I mean, I'm blown away that people are showing up. I, I don't even <laughs> understand how. I you're like I have to know him. I guess like uh, from Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. and it's uh, an incredibly humbling experience to even just see as people walk in. And it's it's old, young. It's people with tattoos. It's like all this kind of stuff where you're like they're there for whatever reason. They either it's like you're funny. Some people like the cleanness. Some people like the not politicalness, not the heaviness. It's just this whatever it is, and it's cool to see. And that's, that's what it all should be. And everybody really cool. makes mistakes. And nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I make a ton of mistakes. And if you do too at home, unless Jesus listens, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, yeah, we're all just, you know, we don't judge you. I love, back it. On it. I love it. Right. Yeah. You saved me. Thanks. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> you left the Catholic Church. Go ahead and tell me about that. <laughs> Is that? 
<laughs> the Nashville Comedy Festival is going to be, it's great. And they do it every year and it's really building and it's something that's really nice. And a lot of comics come down and more people in Nashville are knowing about the festival. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, and we're just, it's just going to keep going. And it, I, I really do love it. I love that we have a festival here. Do you uh, know when Vecchio Special will be out? No, no. Uh, we're, we already got a clip of it to look at it, but we got to edit it. We got to do stuff. I don't know where it's going to be. It can be on YouTube. We can try to sell it somewhere else. Uh, there's a whole process to it. I'll let everybody know when we know. I mean, you know, hopefully three to six months, there's an idea of where, but I, you know. We got some fun pictures of it here. The set, oh, everything yeah, looked, looked great. Looked great. Was that was Zanies, but they redid the whole, I mean, it looks like, uh, I mean, yeah. it looks like a theater in there. It's really, really yeah. cool. Yeah, the stage was awesome. Uh, we got his name right there. I like the idea of that. Like, it was just this side shot with his name. And that's all of us. That's, you know, Ari Shafir Soder, Shane Gillis, uh, Jay, me, Josh Adam Matters, Brian Dorfman owns Zany, Sal Vicano, my sister, and then uh, Mike Vecchione. And it's like, it's a crew. This is what I love. I'd love to have a crew. Those are guys that would do any, uh, that's Mike's girlfriend, Katie. There's, there's these guys and, and Ray Allen, he was on the, he on the show, he helped uh, uh, produce it with Mike and uh, he opened for us. So does Katie. And it's, this is a group that's, it's not, you know, my parents would not have wanted me to technically be with these people <laughs> when I grew up. <laughs> but my parents love them all now, and they yeah. all come from very different backgrounds. They all and love we would them. all do for any, yeah, I love them. They love me. We would yeah. all do anything for anybody. Yeah. And that's what I love, that we all get, you get just different varying points. Everybody has a different opinion. Everybody grew up different. Uh, you know, I mean, it's crazy. Ari's dad was in the Holocaust. How crazy is that? Ari Shafir, like all the stuff. Wow. People get mad. I mean, he does a lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> <And> <laughs> rightfully so, they get mad. And they, yeah. but like, I mean, his, like, just, I mean, his upbringing with that, it's crazy. I mean, it's just crazy. And that's what it is. Get, get friends that are just, if you got a weird kid in school, go talk to that guy. That uh -huh, guy's yeah. probably going to be. More in, you know, just yeah. have a good group. Yeah. Don't have a bunch of U's. Right. That's yeah. almost the way you can have a couple U's. <laughs> yeah. But over, not really. I mean, it's good. Don't, don't have a bunch of U's, you know? Yeah. You got that David Tell joke a friend will help you move a couch, a best friend help you move a body. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Live like that. And that's how the, that's the advice. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are yeah. going to go to school tomorrow and just be like, just find one. Just, you know? <laughs> Kids in his corner and be like, "Hey, do you want to move in with yeah. me and my family? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, know, you know, go as far as you want to go." <laughs> yeah. uh, let's start with the comments. Uh, Heather Waldridge, my best friend, and I attended the live ta live taping and Mike Vecchione's special, and they were both fantastic. When y'all talked about fish being meat, my friend looked at me and said, "It's uh, pescatarian." What is it? Pescatarian. Pescatarian. <laughs> yeah. That's like a yeah a church thing. It's right? like a religion. Yeah. Pescatarian. A pescatarian. pescatarian fish. Yeah. yeah. So pescatarian sounds like is it being like I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. Is that what that means? Is that how it's spelled? Uh, that's how. Yeah. That's how. Is it it's pessimistic? Like you're not. You're always. That's a little, pessimistic. Yeah. yeah. It's you're, you're kind of like you don't. Yeah. Well, pescatarian. It sounds like it's religion. Yeah. Like we all go in going. I, yeah. I would like to be won over every day. <laughs> Like you go every day, you walk into church, you go, I don't, let me see what you're talking about. All right. And then I'll let you know. Uh, I have no clue what that means or why she knew it, but couldn't ask details about that during the show. It's not like she is a scientist or a fisherman, but apparently has a deep knowledge of the food pyramid that she has hidden from me for years. Yeah. It's so you, a church thing. You know so what she means? Pescatarian is, it's like a vegetarian, but you'd eat fish. You oh, is that not the church? Fish. What's yeah. the church? That's a Episcopalian. Yeah. That's what I was saying. <laughs> a Presbyterian. I thought a Pescatarian was a, I thought it was like a religion. No. I thought people said, I'm Pescatarian. You go, oh, yeah, I know. I got an uncle that goes there. No, I'm they, baptized. Yeah. yeah. They just eat catfish. That's the whole joke yeah. I was yeah. making. Was that that church goes in, because I thought a Pescatarian, a, what is it? A pesc, uh, Episcopalian. Yeah. Episcopalian. <laughs> changes everything i thought the church was pescatarian and i like the idea that everybody walks in with a little like you know oh, pes yeah, a little <laughs> pessimism the first five rows are empty like everybody's like i'll sit in the back i'll move i mean let me see if i want to get up that's what i 
<laughs> I, and then I thought, well, her friend went to, she grew up a pescatarian, the church. You I could be in conversations with people, and I think we would, we would be able to finish the conversation and then walk away. With two and different no one, things. No one would know. Yeah, it just happened. It would just, yeah. Yeah, it, I thought we were riffing about how it sounds like, like a no, that guy's a smart dude. That's what they would think. And then it would be like, oh, he doesn't know. <laughs> Last week on the live podcast, we talked about people from up north. And Mike said, we got some union folks here, mm-hmm. meaning like we're Confederates, they're union. Yeah. But you went the route of union workers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You do your own thing. I do my own thing. Uh-huh. They're I'm important. Own island. Union still jobs. got laughs. I'm the weird kid that yeah. you. I need you to come talk. To. Like I'm, the, yeah, I'm in my own world. Yeah. Uh, rewind. Rewinds retro. Retro. <clears throat> rewinds retro. Aaron was on today. He really opened up. Opens up in front of a crowd. It was like a different person. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm back. Yeah. You were the no crowd today. You. You're the guys like when the lights come on. You play your best, Mr. October. Uh, yeah, dude, I thrive under pressure. That's what it's yeah, all yeah. about. Well, the lights are on and these people are listening. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you bring it every it's time. It'll be nice. Uh, <laughs> Spencer Heaton, the fact that Nate said who instead of what when he misheard Brian say cities cover 3% of the earth's surface. Means that Nate thought Brian said an individual person covered three percent <laughs> of the Earth's surface. Not truly, Nate truly is an enigma. What's an enigma? Like mean? a mystery. Oh, yeah. I am a mystery. Uh, That's so funny. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would think like a Bermuda <laughs> Maybe I thought a group of people covered three percent of the. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know. And he said New York is two of that three percent. That was funny. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> making fun of New York City. <laughs> yeah. This stuff comes in, and it's it's. We got our own carnival going on here. It doesn't all. You don't come out the same. You don't. It's not a. It's not a weld machine. It's. I mean, people. Some people are there. Some people don't show up. <laughs> William Ryan, Breakfast Bates needs to open the next episode with a bunch of hats from different pharmacies to let us know which one he chose. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Do that's you have an update idea. on the whole pharmacy situation, Brian? Yeah, my father-in-law did some research. And two of those pharmacists um, are leaving that mm. CVS and going to a CVS down the street. Okay. Oh. So we may be transferring just loyalties yeah. to another CVS. Which is nice. I think that's really, really what you're, you're not there for the CVS. You're there for the people. Mm-hmm. And they know our medical background, which is pretty extensive. Yeah. So. Yeah. You do want that. It's I a mean, whole file cabinet. It's a whole. <laughs> when you walk in, it's. A whole thing. Like, here comes the squirrel tack guy. Like, they probably put that in because they have to just also know, are you around squirrels? Like, we need to know. And you go, I'm not only around them, they're after me. And it goes, good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, yeah. I'd imagine, yeah, you come in. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. They know us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Way to get medicine for my dog there. Yeah. Oh, and that dog's probably got got problems yeah she's on prozac is she yeah really yeah oh, wow. she has anxiety yeah uh, wow <laughs> try petting her <laughs> try petting her yeah, yeah. 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 it's a good idea yeah, just, <laughs> we just want to medicate our child we don't want to love her yeah. <laughs> is is it probably because she's so little i'd imagine little ones are just because you're like you you can just always get kind of squat yeah you would think she's yeah. a rescue the way she acts she's Mine's so yeah. skittish about everything but, but she was bred you went and, yeah i got her to Breeder, people probably hate me for that, but well, that happens. I, I think you got sold a rescue, and someone liked you. About <laughs> well, you may be right. <laughs> I mean, who told you they were breeding it? Well, I mean, we we picked her up when she was eight weeks old, yeah. so yeah, um, unless they beat her before, yeah, her eyes not all, open. yeah, not all rescue yeah. dogs are, you know, mine's pretty good. I yeah, and obviously dogs. not all breeders are, are yeah, good. Exactly. But, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, um, so she's she's got some issues. We're working with her. <laughs> <laughs> How, is it Prozac every day? Like put it in yeah. the food. Yeah. Wow. She have a therapist as well? Yeah. We ever, <laughs> we ever, yeah, she does. Really? <laughs> does she? We have a trainer that comes. Oh. And, it's basically a therapist. Yeah. She just wants us to give her positive reinforcement. Oh, no negative. Just good girl, Hazel. Good girl. So it's all good girl. Good you good can't girl. say don't poop like on the floor. Like if it peed yeah. on the floor, you would have to go. That's good. Well, you wouldn't <laughs> say that's good, You would, but you wouldn't say it's bad either. But when she does something like you want, yeah. you're supposed to reinforce that yeah. positive. Yeah, you're not rolling up a newspaper is what no. you're saying. Okay. <laughs> no. Going down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Phil, too. That, you know, oh, your your life 
Makes me feel bad. I go, I to come down to, the, <laughs> to my level. I want to fly to fly at a different altitude. <laughs> yeah. You have a. You need the dog. Given this, yeah, she's got you know acid reflux. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I even knew you gave dogs. I didn't know that. Prozac. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I'm sure it's a certain type of dog. Prozac. I don't know. Yeah. I bet it's the same. You should just try taking it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Not that you need the whole family. Is it the same? I mean, I think it is. We've got it at the same pharmacy. I thought I'd have to go to like the vet or something. They're like, Mm -hmm. they called it at a CVS. You got to throw a few in there and see what happens. (laughs) Maybe calm you down. You know? I am pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, maybe your worried face would go away. Yeah. Just just be happy all the time. (laughs) Yeah. You would just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Stevens. I've never heard of someone eating the whole apple and Aaron asked Vecchione if he ate the whole apple. I thought it was an absurd question. Apparently, people do eat the whole apples, Mm -hmm. but there is poison in the seeds. Yeah, I've heard that. A human would have to chew and swallow 150 seeds in a short period of time to die from the poison. All right. Yeah, I saw a guy eat a whole banana with the peel and everything. Just like, just chomped into it. You saw it. a guy like, do that? Saw a, guy he, do a friend it. of mine didn't yeah. peel it. Just eat. Yeah. That's how he eats it. He just eats yeah. the banana with the peel on it. Yeah. Oh, my it's God. disturbing. What if he didn't know? <laughs> what if he just go, hey, what if you peeled it? He goes, what? <laughs> and he just, <laughs> he goes, he just, he's eating he, the stem? He just eats the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. He's Did he just, say why? No, he says there's more fiber in it, like it's yeah. better for you. You know, people oh, say stuff, yeah. and you're just like, I don't need yeah. it to be that much better for me. Yeah. I'm going to just yeah. peel it. It's like, find yeah. other ways to <laughs> yeah. do better. I just read this, that there was poison in an apple seed. I've heard that. Yeah, I, I mean, literally yeah. read it last night. Yeah. I have some, like, fact thing that gives you just some dumb facts. Snapple like, cap. Yeah, it's kind of like that, and it's yeah. an app, and uh, it just said that. That's crazy. So you could get 150 seeds. And just eat them all at once, and it, it could kill you. Mm-hmm. Man. All right. Uh, it's a good way to go. <laughs> could I mean, I mean, would they, yeah. They, would you, they even know? I guess they, I mean, something yeah. had to happen to somebody. I mean, yeah, they would have to be. <laughs> I feel like after, if you did that, they'd be like, everybody would agree, it's probably time for him to go. Uh, <laughs> just eating seeds. Just the eating the. the Seeing them uh, like pistachios. <laughs> you would have no idea. You're like, I don't know. He ate apples every day, the whole thing. Mm. He'd eat 150 of them a day. And he go, had a ton of energy. Connor Knighton, before Nate moves his entire family to Oregon to live next to a giant mushroom, you should know there's not much there to look at. It's definitely not a tourist attraction. It's almost all underground. I did a story for CBS Sunday Morning on the fungus a couple of years ago. The scientists we interviewed said the mushrooms were delicious, but he also said they give one in eight people violent diarrhea. (laughs) I had a long drive ahead of me, so I decided not to risk it. After a day of hanging out with experts, it's it's nice to listen to Nate Aaron and the Babadook Babadook (laughs) talk about penguins and how sad the moon must feel. Uh... All right. So I watch CBS Sunday morning regularly for years. So is this the guy? I'm familiar with Con- well, that's the guy he's interviewing. But yeah, Connor Knighton. There's Knight. Connor there Knighton right there. Oh, oh, that's him. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen him. And he went down. So this is him going down to look at the mushroom. Mm-hmm. And do you like see it? So there's not a big mushroom. I think most of it's underground. Okay, that's convenient. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we could say we have the largest yeah. mushroom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of mushrooms yeah. all over there. Yeah. yeah, but it's the largest. But is it? It's, it's the like, largest living object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would think that it would be like it's all oh, under. It yeah. would be one thing, oh, but so, collectively, so, it's one. Thing. So the ground is all mushroom. Oh, so I just thought it was a tree. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah, I pictured. Thank you, Connor. That would have. <laughs> I would have almost went out there and looked. The humongous fungus. Yeah. We're on a mu- it, it would be you'd be going. We're all on a mushroom, and I'd be like, "That's crazy! <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> Where's the helmet and all that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Looks like a mushroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he does. Uh, <laughs> you ever be like, how dangerous is this mushroom? Uh, Sarah Nistetter, Nistetter. My husband just said, "Are the Alps not the same as the Appalachians?" Nate, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> For knowing these were different mountains. I think yeah. I've already forgot that I did know that. 
Yeah. Well, last week we talked about the Appalachian. I guess we talked about the Alps too. And mm-hmm. the Alps are in Sweden. Wow. I'm even no. more impressed. Are they? That sounds right. Swiss Alps. Sounds right. Swiss Alps. Swiss. Switzerland. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Switzerland. Yeah. Different. We're it's close though. Yeah, it's close. It's the same ballpark. It's all the same. I think it'd get your head in the right direction. I'd say. <laughs> I have to ask when you get closer. Yeah. <laughs> like you if you got around. it, you get it. I'd be like, just. Swiss, Sweden, Sweden, I don't know. Start heading there. Yeah. When you feel like you're getting close, <laughs> I'd stop at some gas stations. Yeah. Yeah. Swifties. Stop, we, stop yeah. at Swifties. Like, who's got that knife? Yeah. yeah. But we know it's not East Tennessee. Yeah. That's it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean Smith, Mount Everest, and the rest of the Himalayas. Himalayas, is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, are growing every year, and there are some mountains that are growing even faster than Everest. The closest contender could overtake Mount Everest in just 241,000 years. So if Mount Rainier doesn't step it up, he could lose his place on the podium. Who was uh, called that? I mean, I just, I can feel science. <laughs> when you like, asked if mountains are growing? <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't even, I have no schooling. And I just. You got an instinct for it. I got an instinct for like, I bet the mountains are growing. Mm-hmm. They're just going to be. So are you going to climb Mount Everest before it goes to number two? You Mine's, have a little more time. Oh, before – oh, because Mount Everest is still number one. It's going to be number one for another yeah. 241,000 years. And Mount Rainier is number two? No, he's just no. saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it could lose – yeah. Mm-hmm. Mount Rainier is going to uh, – And it always it has – It could slip. Yeah. It always has snow, right? It's not like a summertime you can do it where it's like nice. Not that high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were do there it in the spring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Mount Everest might not be worth it by the time you get up there. Have you seen this <laughs> picture of the queue waiting to get to the top of Mount Everest? Yeah, that's crazy. How backlogged it is. That's crazy. Now, yeah. this was taken. I know the story because this appeared in a Netflix documentary I watched. But there's 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 only certain weather windows you can climb it. Just yeah. Based, and and there yeah. was a really small window this particular year. So that's the amount of people trying to get up there. Imagine that you have to and wait in line and they got to go walk by them. Jam. Well, what? Well, they're all strapped onto a yeah. metal wire. Yeah. They're all hooked onto it. Yeah. So they have to be in a single file line like that. Yeah. And they're all just waiting for their, you know, 15 seconds up at the top. Yeah. Yeah. You see, that's That's weird. the peak up there? Yeah, I yeah. think it's, yeah, that's going up to the to the top of it. And then, but how do they get down? They have to walk by them? You go back down the other side of the wire. Yeah. yeah. You have to yeah. come back. See, I think, you know, the, the attraction to just climbing a yeah. mountain is you're by yourself. And yeah. You have this, yeah. like, moment, this, like, epiphany, and then you're just, like, I thought it was really DMV. rare to get you <laughs> It's, like, crazy. Yeah. I mean, you think there's got to be a guy that's, like, I'm not, this is good enough to Yeah. Me. Like, he's just, like, I'm not going to wait in this line. Go, oh, I'm sure. And you're, like, well, you were right there. He goes, what's the, I, yeah. I got no Wi-Fi. Well, like, um, four hours? Yeah. I mean, that's got to yeah. be, I mean, how long is that going to take? He's going to like an Uber a chopper. He's yeah, like, it's cold. <laughs> it's not like there's like a slide down on the other. Like there should be <laughs> like an easier way. Like they go, then you get on this side, yeah. then we just shoot you yeah. down. Yeah. And there's isn't there like dead bodies like there All too? over, yeah. yeah. They really? actually use some of the dead bodies as landmarks. Oh my yeah. goodness. Oh, really? Yeah, because they're perfectly preserved up there because it's so cold. So it's, a, it's literally a guy. Just a guy who died in the 70s yeah. or 80s, and the body's oh, still wow. there. And they yeah. know, like, when you get – there's some guy, I think it's like – they call him, like, Green Jacket Guy. Yeah. Because he's just been one dead the up masters. there. And they just know that's one of the, <laughs> the landmarks for, wow. for where you are. What a weird marker. You just walk by him. Yeah. 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 You can't mm. get him down. Hmm. Can't, that's, yeah. That's I not mean, very good motivation. Can you just hook him to that line and just let him slide? <laughs> just throw it. Yeah, I mean, why don't you just, just, just throw it? And just throw just push it, it like a clothesline. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to hook him to the line. What if you just toss him off? Toss him off. I'm sure that's where he wants to be, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how he wanted to go out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you mean, I hope hope his children aren't into climbing (laughs) Mount Everest. Imagine, you know, like that's, he he wants to go, I want to climb Mount Everest. Why can't you do it? You've climbed so many mountains. My dad has d- died up there. Yeah, he's marker ten. And they go, 10. well, that's yeah. like nice. You go, no, 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 no. It's a little. It's worse than you think. His, it's literally his body. Yeah, his jacket. I just can't. On it. I can't. Yeah. Why would you? You know, a, trash is another big problem up there because it, you get to a certain point where it, it, you can't, you yeah. can't cart this stuff down. You're going to yeah. risk your life. So there's just. 
Yeah, that's, piles and piles of trash up there, and becoming, dead bodies, and wow. it's kind of a nightmare. Because I've thought about that too, you know, climbing it, but that's it's less and less appealing as we look at this. <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a dead lot. guys and trash. It's a lot. Yeah, just do like Mount Rainier. Lines. Just do one that's like you could walk up tennis shoes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something that's like you know people yeah. know the name of it. Uh, James Mifflin, like Dunder Mifflin. Mm. The smallest country by population is Vatican City. In 2019, it had 825 people. Yeah, I was way off when I said Greenland was the smallest. It's not. Mm. Even, I don't know where I got that, but Vatican City is much smaller. And it's its own country just because they, they they're it's where the popes at. Yeah, like, yeah. people born there. Like, or is it like only the people that work at Vatican City are like the I don't know if just straight up like families live yeah. there in yeah. houses. I don't think it's so. There's like a kid that's like, I'm from Vatican City, and then he's like, and it's just doesn't the Pope, do good in right? school. And like, you know, like, I mean, they, they have to show a passport to get, like, you know, or you. I don't think so. I think you, it's, it's, it's mean. It's for all intents no, and purposes. I've been there. It's, oh, yeah. Part yeah. of Italy. I've right? been there as well. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then it's part, it's Italy, but yeah, but it's like, so they make their own laws, they make their own. Well, they have their own zip code. <laughs> yeah, they don't own taxes. Yeah, it's kind of like Disneyland and stuff or something. Where <laughs> Pope's the king. Pope's the yeah. king of Vatican City. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I think technically he's yeah he's like the he's government. Got, he's got to run everything though. And yeah, it yeah. Seems... but it's small. It's only yeah. a few, few hundred yards. You know, so they go to him and like you know the roads are getting bad. There's a CVS uh, there too. Did you know that? Is there? Really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is there a queen? <laughs> a Dairy Queen? Uh, huh? yeah. No women. <laughs> um, Alan Cochran. Hello, folks. I didn't go to Notre Dame, but I believe Aaron's logic on counting rings in the tree is a bit off. If you cut a cross section of the tree, then counted the rings, you wouldn't double them. Being that each ring goes all the way around, doubling the number of rings would give you double the actual age. Sincerely, an Armachui, <laughs> Armachui high school graduate. Yeah. Where's Armachui? I don't, know. I don't know, but that's a great point, Alan. It's a great point. If you you double it and then divide by two, and then that'll <laughs> then that'll give you the answer. Yeah, yeah. So you just count the rings. You just count the rings. I forgot how rings and, worked. Yeah, when yeah. I said that. And it's yeah, it's like eight. This one's eight years old. Uh, why do we need to know how old all these trees are? I guess it's just nice to know some. We were talking about a tree that's the oldest tree. Yeah, that's what we were talking about last week, Methuselah. And like, how do we yeah. even know? Well, maybe you cut a little chunk off of it off and then double that, but you wouldn't have to double it. Yeah. But I mean, you'd have to cut it all the way to the middle. I think the next person comments on how they okay. do it. Oh. Cat uh, Cook. When my dad was a Boy Scout, Boy Scout a park ranger showed us... Uh, Back it up. Basic words. <laughs> when my dad was a Boy Scout, a park ranger showed his troop how the how they measure trees. They drill a little hole into the side of the tree, and it pulls out a round silver sliver sliver of wood. From there, you can count the rings. There you okay, go. that makes sense. They drill a little hole mm-hmm. inside the tree. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. You don't have to double it, and you don't ever ask. But would it and and does the tree get more rings? I think every year it adds one. Oh, it adds a ring, mm-hmm. so it just grows and gets. So eventually, is it like real big and fat, or does is there? Do they always stop growing? I mean, if you didn't cut down a tree, are they going to get like? If you have this tree, a tree in your backyard. No, I think they stop. Well, that's a good question. Does there have to be? Cer- does there have to be certain rings before you can cut it? Is that how, like a, a tree law or something? Yeah. Maybe the rings get very, very, very thin. Yeah, they're they're yeah. marginally, it's marginally bigger every year. I know, yeah. but so in a tree in your backyard, mm-hmm. yeah. If you don't ever do anything in a thousand years, is that tree going to cover my whole yard? Mm, no, no. The roots no, I think it would might. die before that. Yeah, but if it, oh, how but, long do they? How long do trees live? Well, Methuselah was that tree was four thousand, almost five thousand years old. Yeah, but that was. That was remarkable, right? It wasn't like there's a bunch of trees that old. So what do you say, my trees? How do you know my trees not? I mean, we'll see what happens, dude. Yeah, they, maybe they'll get. Better. How long does a tree? I think that's yeah. a good question because yeah. trees stop growing, but I guess they keep going a little bit out. 
I don't like you talking about my trees like that. <laughs> what about those giant trees, like red forests and stuff? Those things are around forever, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, trees can live anywhere from less than 100 years to more than a few thousand years. So. I mean, and they do eventually die? Is that what the, or? I guess they eventually die. I mean, thousands pretty good. A thousand's <laughs> good. And then... Uh, oh, All know, trees do eventually die. Oh, wow. Okay. It's still not the rings. I mean, like... I was but thinking, his, is, his question was, do they keep growing while they're alive? Because it's the rings would be, you know, does it the rings stop? And then you're like, how do you know then? Like, do you does it get a new ring every year, and then it just can only get so big, and you know that kind of stuff. It's a great question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, do trees grow until they die? Just click. Ask the people. Also, ask. That's right. right. I always head to that. They do and they don't. That's what it says. Yeah, what a what a ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't. It's, they stop. They stop growing in height, but they continue to grow in width. So the height is more or less fixed, but trees can you add width to their trunks to put out new branches and sprout leaves. Yeah. So that's where so that's where the rings would be growing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's and such when a they fun. Get, do they grow until they die? Yeah, they do and they don't. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Kelly Callahan, learning that Breakfast Bates was the waffle maker offender was one of the greatest pieces of information I have ever received. <laughs> I had to immediately go back and watch that section of Nate's special. So I could hear it again, knowing it was Brian, and pictured his worried face once he realized what he had done. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I probably would have. Yeah, I guess we could have like played it out. I hope we played it big enough. I never thought about. You know, I knew it was you. So, yeah, it's a big deal though. Big reveal. Big reveal, and that's what we did. We got it. Uh, we would all say that an electric bike is too expensive, right? That's what everybody's going to say. Finally, there's an e-bike made for everyone, electric e-bikes, and they just start at seven, uh, $799, $800. They are the fastest-growing e-bike company in the U.S. Uh, we have one. It is awesome, and it was very easy to do and set up. I was I liked it more than I thought. Yeah. And it's super, super fun. It's, it's like awesome. riding a motorcycle. Oh, dude. Is it pretty fast. And yeah. It yeah. goes like yeah. this one you get up to like 20, 22 miles an hour. Like it's fast. And uh, you know, like in neighborhoods or riding around, like it's just very, very fun. Yeah. I mean, it was honestly when we they sent it to us, it was like uh we're like, all right, and then you're like, I don't where am I gonna do this? And then just to ride around the neighborhood, dude. It's like the most fun. Is uh, that pedals as well? It has pedals yeah. as well as well. So if you get stuck out, my dad drove it. Like everybody drove it. Uh, I mean, truly, I mean, loved it. And uh, charge. It's just like you just pop onto it. Uh, you can cover up to forty-five miles at up to twenty-eight miles per hour on wow. just a four to six-hour charge. I mean, that's like yeah. You just if it's a nice day and you're like, well, I'm gonna go. I want to go, you know, I mean, you, you know, you, and you have pedals to bike if you want to do right, little exercise, right. but you don't want to get stuck out. Yeah. And then you're like, that's enough, yeah. you know. <laughs> and then maybe you should go out and be in the wild. You know, there's got yeah, all these yeah, green gateway. What's Is that the Greenway or something? That is. That's the Donaldson Gateway project when you enter Donaldson. Yeah, yeah. Donaldson, yeah. There you go. Uh, it's like you can go right on those bike paths, just be cruising around, just get some air. I mean, it's it, it really, I truly uh, – it's way more eco-friendly than a car. Uh, a, a great way to explore the great outdoors or the city. I mean, 45 miles, I could drive to Nashville and back. Yeah. Yeah, get on the highway. Uh, <laughs> join the affordable e-bike revolution. Go to electricebikes.com and use code Nate to get a free foldable mountain bike lock with any bike purchase. That's a free bike lock when you use code Nate at L E C T R I C e b i k e s dot com electric bikes dot com uh also shout out to all four if you've been listening to the show you've probably heard me talk about our helix mattress everybody loves it uh helix left the bedroom and started making sofas that we have a great one uh in uh laura's office that uh, i sit in all the time it's uh we it's we chose the armchair with the sand fabric with the natural wood legs uh, it's super comfortable. All form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. Sofas can take months, weeks, or months to arrive. 
and you need someone to put it together. All form takes just three to seven days to arrive, and you can assemble it yourself. No tools needed. They have uh, the you know the fabric is spill, stain, scratch resistant, all the stuff. The color of the legs, sofa size. It's just a great way to fit. You know you can fit it anywhere because you can customize it. If getting a sofa without trying it sounds a little too risky, well you get 100 days to decide if you want to keep it, and that's a good. It's a, you get a good go at it. Yeah, more than three months. If you do not love it, they will pick it up for free and give you a full refund. They even offer a forever warranty. Warranty, literally forever. Uh, to find your perfect sofa or chair, check out allform.com/nate. And All Form is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate, A-L-L-F-O-R-M dot com slash Nate for your new favorite sofa. That is 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Uh, we've all started taking athletic greens. None of us eat very well. Nate's doing better, right? You're on the road. I'm crushing it now, dude. I was impressed with that, actually. <laughs> His he? eating was, yeah, it was really impressive. I'm eating on my calorie yeah. thing. Calorie and counts. Athletic greens, though, are great because it's like you get all that, uh, the vitamins. You get it just, mm-hmm. you just do the drink. Yep. Uh, I get it in here. Laura makes the drink. My barber can help me with my athletic greens. And uh, I, I just love how easy it is. It's really you just pound it and then you're. You feel like a new man. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I get up every morning. I make uh, Eleanor's formula, put two scoops in of baby formula and some water. Then I take my athletic greens, put me in one scoop, yeah. mix them both up. We be- both have our- Eat together. Eat together, and it's great. Very and then easy. you give your dog uh, Prozac. Yeah. That's in the, is that in the ro- rotation? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, it yeah. is. I didn't want to bring that up, but yep. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. The travel packs are great for when any of us are on the road. You can easily pour it into a bottle of water. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially with cold and flu season. Uh, we've got a friend. We just talked about it. A friend of ours has flu. It's flu season. So it's just calling literally. it now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Nate to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. The whole podcast crew loves their Viore clothing. Laura got the performance jogger with the halo hoodie. Nate got the performance I've joggers got wearing this, some this now. Is, I'm wearing this now. This is Vioria, uh, Viore. And uh, I got this and some shorts that match this. And it's like a jogging. But mm-hmm. I mean, I wore it on the plane today. I'm a giant fan, dude. Like this is... Uh, it's I don't know. It's just perfect. It's like your your own world. It's great travel where it can be worn for just about any activity, like running, training, yoga, or sitting on a plane. But also great for lounging and stuff like that. It's also so comfortable. You will want to wear it all the time. Their website's very easy to order from. It's not cluttered or busy. It's means business. Hop on there, get some good clothes. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering twenty percent off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioriclothing.com slash nate pay attention this word's difficult to spell viori clothing v-u-o-r-i clothing.com slash nate not only will you get 20 20 percent off your first purchase but enjoy free shipping on any u.s orders over 75 dollars and free returns but you won't want to return it go to vioriclothing.com slash nate and discover the versatility of viori clothing and finally take it from me guys you want to avoid these subscription plans you need you need to get on top of it you got to use truebill it is your secret weapon to save you money on subscriptions it's a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need want or simply forgot about it's very easy you hop on there you link up all your accounts it yeah. scans through them it finds when your payments are coming up it says you still use an ESPN plus you haven't logged on there and months and I go, you go ahead and cancel that for me, True Bill. And they do it. In fact, people save up to $720 a year with True Bill just by keeping an eye on these subscription plans. And you get a concierge. That's an, e- that's an e-bike. 
Oh, dude, you can use that and buy, <laughs> buy, an <e-bike. laughs> buy an e-bike there. Absolutely. Um, they have over 2 million people. They've saved people over $100 million on these subscriptions. It's so easy and quick. Just log on there and uh, and link up your accounts and take a look at uh, what you're doing. It's easy to overlook stuff, as I found out. So if a kid approaches you on yeah. the street, you sign up for something, then go to True Bill. And True Bill will say, why are yeah. you paying this? Yeah, this company yeah. every I month. Gotta, I got. I got to use that. I have like BritBox or something. Yeah, oh use. yeah. Go to Truebill, <laughs> knock <laughs> it all out, <laughs> yeah. and it, your life will be way better. Don't fall for subscription scans. Start canceling today at Truebill.com/slash/nate. Go right now. Truebill.com/slash/nate. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com/slash/nate. All right. Your mom was the original get Truebill. It. Yeah, my mom does great. <laughs> She'll get you out of everything. Yeah, she's my Truebill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I would go. They you just cancel it on the app. Right. Do it all through the app, That's and it, and if they can't do it automatically, they will call on your behalf. No way, because you give them the information, they'll call on your behalf. Oh, it's it's wow. pretty awesome. That's it is like great. having a Nate's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> to yeah, do yeah, stuff yeah, for yeah. you. That's cool. You want to hear a crazy story? Yeah. It happened this weekend. So we have a buddy of ours, Steve Byrne, stand up yeah. comedian who lives yeah. here in Nashville. Yeah. Good friend. He was on the road in Fort Wayne, Indiana. With, with Joe Gatto, they went to an antique store, and he texted me a picture of this from the antique store. It's a baseball glove with the name Aaron Weber on it, Are you written serious? with a Sharpie. <laughs> and he sends it to me as a joke, and he says, did you leave behind a baseball glove in Fort Wayne, Indiana? And I said, no. So I took that picture. I sent it to my parents just to let them know, hey, isn't this funny? My mom goes, that's my handwriting. <laughs> she used oh, to write our wow. names on all the gloves with a sharpie like that so that's yeah. my mom wrote my name on the sharpie and my dad goes that's 100 percent your glove no way so oh, we don't know what reason. happened but my childhood baseball glove ended up in an antique store in fort wayne indiana which we've never lived there yeah and steve byrne happened to be in that store and saw it did he buy it when I told him about this, he had already left, and he yeah. tried to go back the next day, and they were closed. But we're, oh, we got to find a way to go to yeah. go get I'm, it. I I'm feel in like Indiana too- in June. I'll ch- I'll get it for you. Are you in Fort Wayne? Yeah, close. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. Hopefully nobody yeah. that glove nobody <laughs> buys it. <laughs> you got to call them and say, "I want that." I bet there's a yeah. folk that yeah. lives there to go get it for you. There yeah. might be. Yeah. Yeah. If someone's there. Is someone what what is the name of this place? I need to find that out too. Oh, so your glove is a good way to find all the information. Yeah. I mean, it may not be. Uh, it's a pretty hot I commodity. Mean, you you know? literally know everything. <laughs> you found a glove from when you were a kid in a different city. Well, what's the name? So people maybe go grab it. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't really did your parents? Did they have like yard sales and stuff? We the, here's the best guess my mom could come up with is that when they the last time they moved. They had a box somewhere that just accidentally got left behind, and then this got donated to Goodwill or something mm. like that, and it just made its way to. We've never been to Fort Wayne. We've never lived there. Somehow made its way up there to an antique store. Do you have any memories with this glove? Uh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. remember this glove specifically. Oh wow! Now that now that I was like, oh, I did have a mag, M A G on it. I just thought it was the craziest coincidence. You're wearing it, and you're asking like, hey, why do we have to wear cotton on these summer days? <laughs> I don't know. Was it Seinfeld where they? Oh, the baseball uniforms. Yeah, is it 100% too hot? Cotton? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Too hot. Polyester. No, polyester is too hot. Yeah, uh, and they polyester. switched cotton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh polyester. yeah, polyester. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, if you get the name of it, maybe in a couple of weeks you can let the audience know. <laughs> yeah, I'll grab it. For Fort Wayne, an yeah. antique store in Fort Wayne. Yeah, yeah if it's yeah. antique store, they probably like, wow, is this some ancient glove? Yeah. I mean, why else would it? Yeah, you got to be careful how much you want it because then they'll like jack the price up. No, they might. I would pay. You know, I wouldn't have even paid. Like if somebody showed it to me, I don't know. The, just this this whole story was so crazy. Oh, you know? yeah. Do you want the I'll, glove back or do you want it to? I'd like it to round off the story. Yeah. Like the yeah. fact that Steve was there and found it. We had just exchanged numbers. It was like a yeah. crazy coincidence yeah. that he was there and saw this. Yeah. It'd be fun to have it on the table and talk about it. Yeah. I would have yeah. loved it to. It would be. Yeah. If yeah, you get it, it, we out. can put it yeah. up. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll put it up here. Yeah, we yeah. got to. Yeah, yeah. I'll I make like it that. happen. I will. I will find it. Yeah, and yeah. we'll end the story in a good way. Yeah, and I believe you with Planet Fitness and that other thing. Uh, <laughs> you're if, you, if you're anything, you're a guy that follows through. And <laughs> what up with a monthly membership yeah. to this antique store? <laughs> Working there. 
<laughs> Mom and pop. Yeah. You won't go buy it. They go, uh, $10. I'll give you five. They go, no. And you go, I'm walking. It's not worth it. Drive back home. Yeah. That's a crazy story. Yeah. yeah and wild, Steve too. Byrne is an antiquer. That's I didn't know that. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're on the road, you just like, let's just walk around this yeah. place for mm-hmm. a, you know, a yeah. couple minutes. I mean, that's why you do it. That's un- the odds of that are crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's insane. crazy. Big time. Uh all right. So this week, uh, we were talking about AI, Alan Iverson. And <laughs> <laughs> whole episode just on Alan Iverson. Yeah. Practice artificial intelligence. What do you guys mm. know about AI? We got it in our pockets. Uh, your phone is considered AI. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. You talk to her all the time. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things that I just thought was a cool computer program that's considered AI. Like what? Um, Organ trail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like um, when they talk about how. Computers will someday be smarter than humans. Yeah. I think about all right. A calculator has always been able to add up something instantly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It is smarter than humans. Yeah, that one on Jeopardy. Yeah, beat the, all those people. Yeah, but but that's a specific case which we'll get into. But are you saying calculators are smarter? Or com- well, I mean, why are they not be smarter? Just because they can't do it on their own. Computers. Yeah. Yes, and they don't have um, logic or reasoning or a conscious yet. It's still someone programming to do certain things yet they're Does, trying to give it a conscience yeah i mean yeah. that's what they think it's going towards well, isn't that what hurts yeah. us sometimes the emotions and like overthinking whereas yeah. i feel like the computer gets right to it like yeah we second guess ourselves sometimes we, you know so flying cars for example that's about to be a thing and is it in new york city they're starting oh, in 2024 on. it's they're called e v tolls electric vehicle takeoff land they look more like helicopters. Yeah, pe- yeah, people can't drive on the streets. Like, yeah, but they'll it's... they'll have pilots, but yeah. there are also going to be some pilot less because they said a computer won't make errors like a pilot would. So it'll be just self driving. So it's just like a big drone that you can get in. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. and then so you're going to get in it, and then you're. I mean, but how? What are the? It takes you around the city to where you want to go. You got to land on another landing pad on top of another building. Yeah. Oh, so you fly above the city. I yeah. mean, I mean uh, that is, I mean, kind of cool. But yeah. I mean, I'm terrified I even thinking about it. Of yeah. it. Yeah. So it's helicopters. Yeah. That's terrifying. Uh, yeah. You're gonna see some of them yeah. go down. I just take the subway. I'm good. And then you got to hope that it really works out to the spot that, you, like, this is gonna be very convenient for like a couple people. They're gonna be like, it's the best. Yeah. And yeah. everybody else is like, I don't know. You gotta, you know, take the subway all the way down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you even have to get to, to the landing. I mean, the takeoff place. So they send a car to pick you up mm-hmm. just to get to that. So then you're like, well, if you're already stuck in traffic, why would I want to get in their car? Yeah. But I guess if you were trying to get from one side of the city to the other, and the landing pad's half a block away, maybe that's what I mean. Yeah. That's why you would you would it would need to be like you need to live next to a landing pad, yeah. and then you, where you're going needs to be yeah. Like if you have work. You know, mm-hmm. and someone could move to go do that, and they're like, it takes them five minutes. But I mean, well, it's yeah. kind of like Nashville. We have we have a train system, the mm-hmm. Music City Star. There you go. <laughs> it's one train. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta live right next to it for it to yeah. be worth it, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's, it goes downtown. Yeah, I know a lot of I've, people take it. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. you have to drive to it unless yeah. you, you know yeah. it's not like you're gonna walk to it. But it goes from sure. Lebanon to Mount Juliet. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, but, I mean, the other day I was on the sidewalk and uh, saw one of those Amazon robot things that has the packages in it. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's just like going down Hollywood Boulevard, just going, or actually it was on Sunset, and it's just going down. And then I just started thinking to myself, somebody's just going to attack that thing and yeah. just try to oh, get yeah. whatever's inside of it. I mean, it didn't yeah. happen, but it's like I don't. How do they prevent that? You know what I mean? But it's I, like, but it's a thing now. It's yeah. like they just it that looks because that thing remembers you forever. Then you don't, you know, you think you're. 20 years later, and <laughs> these robots are crazier, and it just shows up at your house. It's right? like the Terminator. And you're just like, like, you yeah. remember me? Yeah. That's and how it started. Like, yeah. yeah. Somebody attacked the Amazon thing. Never seen the Terminator. Oh, that's right. That's the been big trying to, uh I've been trying to download it. Or, like, I've been trying to... <laughs> it's, huh? What? This is like a long... It's a journey yeah. for you just to download it? It's... The, f- uh, the first one is amazing. Yeah, I maybe I can it. start it. Start it tonight. Well, I gotta watch that other thing. <laughs> well, it's definitely when AI yeah. goes wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. what the whole movie is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, I need to watch that. And what I, I just downloaded, Last Action Hero. Okay, well, you could just do a whole Arnold yeah. thing. Yeah, maybe I'll jump into Arnold a little bit. 
Yeah, I would do uh, Terminator 1 and 2 and then the last one that came out. That's okay. I would skip everything in between. Oh, yeah. there's a bunch in between? There's like, th- I think there's there's three. There's number three. Is he then... in all of them? Uh-uh. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's in all of them, I think. I think. I don't he's think in he's, one, two, and three. I don't think he's in the one with the woman where she's the Terminator. No, he's not in that one? I don't oh, think so. Okay. just ruined it. Terminator 3, then we got Terminator Salvation, then we got Terminator Genesis. Well, Salvation he's not in. Is he in the third one? And Terminator okay. Dark Fate. Right. I think he is in the third All one. Right. Is he not? Six of them. He might be. Could be yeah. one. All right. But I would agree. One, and, one and two are the best. One and two. And then the last one was really good. I enjoyed the last one. I thought it was like he's in that one. He it's like a you know where he comes back. But of. I could keep going if I'm just like, I'll just see what's up. But the salvation is like the beginning of it. So yeah. that would be like the first one of the story. Yeah. And then you could just, you know. But the premise, Oh, if I do the like salvation is like the you know, like Star Wars, like the first, yeah. like the prequel or whatever. Oh, how, oh, so you could go to be like, I. it's like... Uh, it's got Christian Bale. And it's, so what if you were like, I want to watch, is there a different order to watch it? Like the way you do Star Wars? Is it like, yeah. go watch Well, it? if you want to do the story in yeah. order, you would do Salvation first. Okay. Yeah. And then, then I go to... And then you would go to one and then two. Okay. All right. Maybe, Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> But it's about the machine uprising. Yeah. Where they become more smarter, more powerful than us and take over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of movies like that, but people are really concerned that's going to happen. Elon Musk, who just bought Twitter. Mm. uh, uh, Stephen Hawking was was concerned about that. Um, Bill Gates, all those people are really concerned that if we don't be careful, we'll program these computers. They'll eventually get... Smarter than us, and then well, if we're not careful. Well, how would Bill Gates have any say in that when he's part of it? Like he created yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, it's funny that all the people like, warning yeah. it are people actively yeah, people, developing yeah. this technology. <laughs> we could just all agree to stop. Yeah, you know, we could technology's got it's doing enough for us. Let's not build something that's going to kill us. And I feel like I wonder if it's they look at it as like uh, like cancer and surgery and doctors, right? And, and right. like that kind of it was stuff where it can really save lives. And, mm-hmm. But you might say, all right, why would a why would a robot or a computer want to kill us? So you program it to cure cancer. Mm. We've been putting millions of dollars into cancer research for years, had no luck. You go do it. <laughs> millions. I mean, technically billions, billions, yeah, okay. billions of dollars in the cancer, and there's thousands still, of dollars. I'm, yeah, <laughs> and there's just nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> that was the beginning of the podcast. I know. Was the argument. <laughs> that was one of his first rants. Where's, yeah, where's the, where's the money going? How's yeah. it all like nothing? Yeah, I think it makes the most sense in the military. You know, I mean, drones are technically that's what that is. Right, but to finish my you thought, know. so you t- yeah. program this computer, go cure cancer and then it decides well the way to cure it is to, to kill all the humans no humans no cancer because mm-hmm. it doesn't have empathy or ethics it just yeah. knows it's got a job and its job is to rid cancer so it just wipes all of us out but what if it was it, it was just one machine trying to figure it out and then we just don't let it we keep it in a room locked up like a prison well they'll all be talking to each other but he's just in there alone. <laughs> Why does he need to talk to another robot? Well, I guess I just assume they're all going to be linked to the internet. And oh, on. like the and the, some guy walks by with a phone, and then your phone strangles you at night. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, two thousand one, a space odyssey that came out in nineteen sixty eight, and even then they were like, "That's about a ro- a computer on the ship that Siri, it's the first Siri." Yeah, yeah. it's called yeah. HAL. Yeah, and they had a mission. And then these astronauts are like, I disagree with Hal's mission. I don't think he's right. He reads their lips that they're trying to overthrow him, and then he kills them. Never seen that either. Yeah. Is it good? It's it's a slow burn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a long movie. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you would. It's not a Nate movie. Yeah. Yeah. I need to go down more Terminator. Terminator. Terminator, Terminator yeah. 1. It's a lot of yeah. shootouts in yeah. Terminator yeah. 1. That's the only yeah. one you're really going to like, I think. Yeah. The yeah, first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go through the whole journey. Yeah, just do the first one. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought he would like the second one better. Yeah. I think the second one's a better movie, but I think action, I don't know. Yeah, so I can just go first and second and be done? Yeah, one and yeah. two is probably the good way to go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's, uh, I think we talked about this on the future episode. It's called The Singularity, which is the point in our history where computers are smarter than humans, and they're calling the shots. Mm-hmm. And once they get to that level, then they can, it'll, uh, it'll be a, uh, explosion of improvement because they can fix themselves and then that improved one can fix itself and fix it in faster 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 Mm. to the point where we can't keep up 
Yeah. And then they're just running everything. So yeah. how far away are we from that, do you think? The six years? Futuristic Google said like 2040 or 2045, something like that. What but is futuristic Google? A like, guy who got a different internet? <laughs> just a Google that yeah. A futurist. Future? His job is yeah. a futurist. Oh, a futurist at Google. Yeah. I thought oh, you said okay. a futuristic Google. <laughs> yeah. I thought you went into the future you guys don't and know Googled about this. Yeah. Futuristic Google? And I'm the old guy here? Yeah, Come on. Yeah. yeah. I still think we we'll always have the upper hand of any computer because we can unplug it, we can destroy it. Like I think we'll yeah. always have the upper hand. Like you know, because it needs self- us more than you know. Yeah, like, but I guess they could self charge it. Yeah, they could like figure out a way. Could, they could figure out a way. I don't know. I trust our weaponry. I think, I think we could. I think, know, but the, they are the weapons we're using. Like that's yeah. So if they just turned on us. You know, yeah, but we have to program it. So oh, you're saying it could just start programming it? So, yeah, if it yeah. programmed and we had it, and so that's it the just, war. The yeah. war would be that's it Terminator. Just turns on us. Yeah, and that's, that's yeah, that's the story of Terminator. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's the exact story. Yeah. That is the exact story. Like I don't think it'd be true. I'm like, you're telling me to watch yeah. this movie, <laughs> but I think we won. I think at some yeah. point, oh, yeah. at Face, some point, Facebook, and we still have Arnold Schwarzenegger. So we do. We, we, <laughs> yeah, we we actually made him good. I, yeah. I don't want to destroy the okay. whole thing. I don't know. Facebook was working with chatbots, which. You guys mm-hmm. know we have you ever done chat bot? No. You go online, ask a question, and oh. it acts like it's a person replying. Yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. But they were trying to make it more personable. So they had two chat bots chat with each other to try to figure stuff out with each other. Yeah. They quickly came up with their own language just that they knew. Wow. And Facebook had to stop the program. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, it's creepy. They were doing shorthand just because it made it faster for them. And then Facebook stopped it and said, no, for the purpose of this, you got to use English. You can't be doing yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Told them like that. Yeah. And they said, okay. Wow. Well, <laughs> come on, guys. They use go, English. one, one, two. <laughs> there you go. That's the last one. <laughs> I do like okay. robots, though. I mean, the idea of just having a robot. Remember, like it was Rocky f- yeah. Four or something? Yeah. yeah. Had a robot. And it was like mm. teaching it how to like but talk. But he was nice. Yeah. It's a nice yeah. robot. But, you know, we interact with, with AI all the time yep. now. All the time, Siri or whatever, or um, you know, you call a phone number and it's an automated mm-hmm. voice messaging system, something like that. I think what's going to be really scary is when you can no longer tell that these things are are AI when they are, yeah. and that's I think that's called the Turing test. When you pass the Turing test, that you can no longer differentiate AI from real people. Oh, really? That's when it's going to get scary when you can talk to, and you don't even know that you're talking. To a robot yeah. because they're so similar. Well, and that's so close. I think, I don't yeah. know if it's been officially achieved in, in some capacity, but we're so close from there. Oh, it's yeah. it's, it's terrifying. Humanoid Sophia. And she, mm-hmm. she has citizenship in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. That's how sophisticated she is. Yeah. She was on Jimmy Fallon. And, oh, yeah. And, oh. As a guest. Well, credits. I, yeah. I can't get on it, but yeah. Sophia is yeah. killing it on there. Well, yeah, I mean, every time an attractive girl wants to add me on Facebook, I'm like, you're a robot. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's just every yeah. time I'm like, you're not yeah. real. Can you pull up Sophia? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's obvious a robot, but she has fe- facial features and stuff like that that she can do. That uh, uh, it was wow. on Jimmy Kimmel. She looks beautiful. No, <laughs> oh, it's uh... just just Sophia robot. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do okay. remember yeah. seeing this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's like that movie that we yeah. were talking about, Ex Mahina. Ex right. Machina. Machina. God, we yeah, say it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Is it not Machina? <laughs> I thought it was Machina. It's Machina. It's, I thought it was Machina. You know, they never say those words in the movie. They don't. So I think it's just up to your interpretation. I think it's right. Machina. That's what I thought. Ex Machina. Right. Deus Ex Machina. Machina. Whatever you want to call it. But it's just like this. Like, it's literally. Right. Yeah, so that's her. Right. So you can still, you talk to that, you'd still know that that's a robot, right? So it's not yeah. quite there yet. But it's gonna be terrifying. But eventually, like you're gonna go. She's like you're saying, like, like they they come and welcome to the office, and mm-hmm. you follow this girl, and you don't know. That. You have no idea it's a yeah. robot. Yeah, yeah. There's a robot expert that says by 2050, marrying a robot will be legal. Marrying a robot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they'll have their own rights and everything. There's a guy in China who's already done it. <laughs> oh yeah. So you like programmed it to like? Did you get yeah. that I sent you? No, you just sent me the link. What is this? Oh. I'm pretty sure I did. All right, I'll look uh, at it. But anyway, he he was 31 years old, hadn't found a wife yet. In China, there's a lot more men than women. Yeah. He's getting frustrated. His parents were on his case, so he built a robot. He married her. Oh, wow. She can't talk yet. He likes that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. he's training her to do chores around the house. <laughs> oh, wow. Not a So fit. we're just going to go back to the original woman. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it all comes full circle. It all comes full circle. <laughs> if you're listening, that, that yeah. was Nate. Yeah. 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 They it's go 1950s. She had to back to yeah. like a yeah. The future is you going back to the fifties. And you're like, all right, so we're just trying to build the for the woman that we had a long time ago. You're like, yeah, yeah, they're getting a little, <laughs> a little smarter than us. So. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, here's wow. the Chinese man that married yeah. the robot. He built himself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a way to do it. She looks if I little, knew about that, she looks a little young for him, 48, I think. 48. Yeah. Could have saved me some trouble. <laughs> That's like, uh, I keep two- getting older. They say <laughs> the same <laughs> age. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That's going to be the, gonna be the sl- <laughs> slogan for robot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a chat bot um, on uh, Twitter that they try to test by just seeing if he could interact with different people on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it quickly started saying so many racist and sexist tweets that they had to stop it and shut it down (laughs) because it was just infuriating people. It got canceled. It got canceled really quick. The best part is there's other guys. They got in the second row like that. I would imagine if you're, if you're, if you're marrying a robot, you're in love with yourself. (laughs) Like you're just you're just right, completely right, in love with right. yourself because you you're talking no, something. That's not I don't know that guy, but uh, yeah. but yeah yeah. But you're you're talking something that is you and that like learns how to talk to you specifically. And so you're like you wouldn't even know how to have interactions with people because you would be you're like I love myself so much. It's so self entitled. It's the ultimate act of selfishness. I'm yeah. gonna marry something that I could just unplug or yeah yeah yeah. 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 I don't actually have to be a. A real husband to yeah. this thing. Yeah, a woman yelling like at you makes you a way to become yeah. a dictator. You're like, well, <laughs> do you want to be a dictator? You go, I would love to, but that's so much work. So <laughs> I will start with building the thing that I want to do exactly what I want them to do every time. You yep. know? Yeah. So in 2050, Harper will be in her 30s. Yeah. She comes home with a boyfriend and it's a robot. Dad, I want you to meet Hal. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, she's never going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to. She's not being led down the road where that's going to become a possibility. Like, yeah. you know, you, uh, that's where, you know, I mean, the parenting has to I'm come in, in. I'm encouraging Eleanor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, you're, no, you're, you're like, one right now. I would be like, son, yeah. how far can you throw a football? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Building a son in law, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, y'all, yeah, you're going to, I mean, you got a robot at your house taking care of you. So <laughs> I would like that. Is there yeah. any, I mean, what's a thing now in our life that you would like a robot to do? Uh, I don't. I I like doing stuff. Clean the house, uh, dishes, or, or do you stuff? like to watch the kitchen? Your, huh? You like to watch them do it? Uh, yeah. Taxes. Yeah, I wouldn't. You know, I don't think I'd want to take. You don't want to take. Yeah, like to, yeah, if they could do stuff. Uh, I don't want to take jobs for people though. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. if it's you know, you're. Yeah, I don't even like the self checkout. I think that's. Yeah, that's I like, use that a lot. Caught, but it's just so quick. It is quick. So but, I do like that. And then I I understand the quickness, but I I don't I guess so I'm I'm using it there. Yeah, you're using. It. I'm sure I would get very used to almost anything that'd be like that. But I feel like what what are you going to do for jobs? Like I mean, you could slowly get. I mean, the one thing good about a comedian, even though you've seen like the comedian robot or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, like there's, uh, you know, comedians are kind of your voice in your head, right? Like, yeah. And so like you hope that like that's still something, you know? Yeah. Maybe a song like there's still. You just got to hope that people don't. It's you know. creative stuff. It's going to yes. take a while yeah. for AI to replicate. Yeah. yeah. Right. But this is part of what I was talking about with y'all last week. This is what kind of scared me because we were thinking about this. There's this new technology that just rolled out called Dolly. Yeah. Okay. This is from a startup in San Francisco called Open AI. And this is visual, this is software that creates visuals based on text input. Now, if you'd have asked me things that I thought AI would yeah. not replace, I would have said art. Yeah. You know? Right, right, and yeah, this yeah. is this does this creates art with AI unbelievably based on a simple text input. Yeah. These are all AI generated images that have never existed before. Yeah. Yeah. That this this technology is just creating for us. I think there was a movie. I think it was De Niro or something where it was like they did a fake pop singer, and it was like she was the whole thing was fake. Like she didn't exist as a person, but they, you know, cause it was always on TV. It was like she had videos mm-hmm. and like she had all this music, and it wasn't a real person. And yeah. they just like so you you could do it with music, but right. This is an image of a 
that is an AI generated image that does not exist in real yeah, life. Yeah, but so the real thing with that though is like there's a you know not perfect is what makes human what makes it so perfect, to right? You. Mm-hmm. And so there's a point where you everything can become too perfect and you won't and en- then enjoyment is gone. And so everything's like a transaction. Everything's a business. Everything's just give me this. I want this. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's going to be conveniences that you like, but like that art, like I'm not, who are you going to show that to? Like you, it, it's cool now. If you say, I just typed this in and it printed it and you showed it and you have a story behind it. Mm-hmm. But once that's like, well, everybody does that. Well, then why do I care? Like if you show it to me, oh, you got one of those. I agree. I, the one, I agree. You remember the thing that you could, could you have to mix your eyes and you can yeah. see it, you know, like Kramer. Yeah. Had it. <laughs> yes. And then uh, it's like that was like cool because it was like at least like there was a reason to be looking into it. But like that's why I don't think it would take away art because you're like if you p- show me that painting and you're like that's like seeing like I got Tiger Woods uh, autograph and it's just, you know, a printed on there. And you're like, hmm. well, you don't have his autograph. Interesting. You didn't get it from him. Interesting. And no one did that. So yeah. there's no story to it. A story to something is what is the thing that yeah, yeah, I can't get you. They can get you this stuff now. That's probably worth. That could be worth a ton now because of the story. Because you're like, that's crazy. A robot did it. Mm-hmm. But if that comes the everyday, your story's gone. Well, yeah. Well, that's it's what, happening. Yeah. Well, that's what well, yeah, NFTs right. are basically. And, you know, it's just like they're they're making digital art, and then mm-hmm. the story is just whatever you know. The, the the artist I itself. own yeah like I, yeah. what they own like the picture and, and like, something to do with crypto and yeah. the whole thing is kind of connected and whatnot yeah I, I just it's it's flashy and fun and then I think it's gonna like you you can't the the, the being in front of people like, they talk about like doing experiences like isn't mm-hmm. experiences really big with the I guess Gen X or millennial was like all about experiences. And so, like, with this kind of stuff, experiences go away. So if you have no experiences, then we're all just living, you're just asleep yeah. in a bed the whole time. There's no reason to even live. Right. And so it, 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 I could see it getting out of control and stuff like that. But, I, you know, you would hope, and now maybe the generation from generation, like, they just slowly get, like, taken over. Yeah. Then yeah. maybe it's Yeah, well, that's why NFTs are popular, because kids aren't going to museums, but yeah. that's, it comes up on your phone. So, yeah. you know, it's just... Could you tell this thing to paint a picture of your house? And you can it? tell it to do anything, and it will create a... And it works it. now? But a specific thing, like... You say paint Nate Bergazzi, and it would yeah. paint. Yeah. Can you might be able it? to do public figures like that, but it's not... It's not... Because we should do that. It's not <laughs> pulling images from 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 stuff. It's uh-huh. creating stuff that's never been created before. Yeah. It's, so it's it, it, it learns things from the internet. It learns what the shapes of things are, what the colors of things are, the styles of different artists or whatever else. But then the image it creates is is totally creative and out of nothing. But you can do that right now? But this technology, they're rolling it out yeah. right now. A bunch of tech influencers have it. Yeah. And they're demonstrating it on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. I signed up for the wait list. I can't wait <laughs> yeah. to have this. I think this is the most unbelievable thing ever. Yeah. Just that you can create an image of anything. Yeah. It's kind of scary. And they're really worried about people using it for the wrong yeah. bad yeah. things, I, obviously. I, I yeah. think it's horrible because it's like somebody <laughs> yeah. writing your jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's something to yeah. be said about somebody that can paint like that. Talent mm-hmm. you know? is <laughs> talent. Why and like that that's like the robot umpires in baseball. It's like, yeah, dude, part of it is the is that it what kind of ump you got tonight. The imperfection. Though. And then the imperfection and that you got to figure it out as an athlete. And that you like that athlete, you figuring out how they're calling something is the talent that I'm paying to go see mm-hmm. versus just straight up like it's either, you know, it, I don't know, it changes the game. Like, I, and I get the idea with umpires that people want everything to be correct. Uh, but, you know, if they, if they got rid of replay and all that stuff, you'd be like, yeah, it is what it is. Like, uh, I, I understand the argument against it. Replay is good. Like, yeah, they, yeah. you know, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a mix. But if you're not, you're you're still buying people, man. Like, uh, you know, what was it, Michael Scott? You don't you don't fire people, you hire people. Yeah. Like I don't know, you know, is that beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, but it's like that idea that you don't. That's what it's about. Like it can't be this where you just there's no emotion between humans. Mm-hmm. And our 
and it might be that I don't I don't want my daughter to have that. Mm-hmm. I would not put that into her. I love the connection of humans. I love that, you know, it's it's special. It's something that's like your heart. I would imagine that can't that's the, that the heart just goes away. So then you're like, what are you buying? Like you then you can have anything. You have literally anything. You can probably three D print a Lamborghini. So mm-hmm. you're like, I don't get at, at your whatever. You know, you don't get the brain yeah. that you're like. The brain is like the creativity is like. That's like what's that's what's cool is like the idea that you're going like oh this person thinks I don't, I don't think like that I love yeah. the way that guy thinks yeah and like I don't and like so you're doing that and this yeah. all feels fake now maybe fifty years from now they've just been slowly brainwashed into uh-huh. like this is all you know and then they can deal with whatever they, you know yeah I was trying to think of an example that we have now that fifty years ago people might have said that's not authentic. I mean, I can't think of anything. All they want is authentic now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Authenticity is sells everywhere. I mean, this podcast does good with authenticity. Like everything, entertainment, people just want to be talked to like a regular person. Yeah. That's like when you see all these interviews with these coaches and like it's all the same thing and everybody's a robot in the sense of saying, I don't buy my, and they have no <laughs> real, like just talk to us normal, dude. Like what do you, just say what you want us to do and then it's going to be fine and that's going away. And But that, people don't like that. And so it's probably our duty as humans to be like, you know, this stuff's cool to play with and fun with, but you right. teach your kids, like, it, all this stuff doesn't matter. It's like we're here for each other as humans. Mm-hmm. And we might be fighting these dead gum things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I agree. Is that the same program that could write a story? Yeah, this facts? is the same. So the other, another iteration of the same software, this is available now, and I have access to it. This is, the, the, this is open AI playground where you can tell this. You can tell this thing to do anything with text. Yeah. We can tell it to write a description for a TV show. You can tell it to write. You can say like write a description of the well, Nate Land podcast. Write a description for a podcast called Nate Land, starring Nate, Brian, Aaron, and Dustin. I mean, we'll do comedy podcasts. You know, I mean, really, just you misspelled dust. Yeah. Well, it'll it'll. You know, Nate Brown and I are four friends who love to make each other laugh. They're always up for a good time, and their podcast, Nate Land's a reflection of that. Each episode is packed with hilarious stories, jokes, and general tomfoolery. If you're looking for a good laugh, this is the podcast for you. Yeah. That's I, amazing. I, yeah. It, it, it's incredible, dude. Yeah. I, I played with this for like 10 hours. Yeah. You can tell I take it all write, back. Write, yeah. write, write an academic article about the effect of podcasting on stand-up comedy. Let's just create this. The, I mean, it'll just write wow. the whole article for you, dude. This is all cool. AI generated. These these sentences have never existed. So kids can before. use this to write papers. I'm sure uh, that yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. I would be we'd if all, I were writing we'd, papers yeah, right we'd now. We'd have better colleges if this thing was Hope around. Oh, is about this. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's all very scary how quickly it's moving, I think. Yeah. And just how this will be implemented into everything, and you won't even realize it. We've probably read, all of us have probably read articles that are generated this way. Wow. Just with plug and play AI sure. generated nonsense. Oh, but like it's yeah, so like targeted ads. This yeah. is a form of the Turing test where if you read this, you would not, you would think a person wrote this. Oh, yeah. You know? That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Because it does make you think, well, what if, uh, yeah, like if you, uh, yeah, because the thing, the world of Sam Comedy has changed drastically in recent years, and a big part of that is due to the rise of podcasting. In the past, stand up comedians would have to rely on things like late night talk show appearances or comedy specials on TV in order to reach a wide audience. But now with podcasts, they can record their act and reach people all over the world with just a few clips. I mean, that's a true point. This has had a big <laughs> impact on the stand up comedy scene. I mean, that, yeah, no, it's, it's, you would, I would read that you just be like, oh yeah, that's like someone wrote that. On Vulture. But or dude, what have you found out? How long has this been around? This uh couple years, this technology's been available. It is yeah. true that like I wonder if that could be you're gonna be like, Well, how many articles have I read? Or if someone's like, Yo, dude, I need a an article on the effect of podcasting on stand up comedy and you just do this, you turn it in, and then that's an article and there's like yeah. the whole thing's fake. But one thing it does lack is any personal yeah connection to it There's like no for sure like hey i used to do this or yeah. you know i i interviewed this guy or Can whatever you put with quotes yeah with quotations from or 
Oh, can you put a particular from person? From comedians? Can you put from, Nate? From Nate can you put Nate Bargatze? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me see. Let me see what... Uh, let's, let's, let's try this out. With quotations... From... Yeah. Go. It says it's unbelievable. I'm going to be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's unbelievable, honestly. <laughs> with quotations from Nate Bargatze. And here we go. We've submitted it. Nate, Nate Bargatze, Bar- a stand-up comedian, has been quoted saying, podcasting has had a big effect on stand-up comedy. <laughs> he goes on to say that it, it's given a lot of comics a chance to be heard who wouldn't have otherwise... You wouldn't have otherwise, and it's helped connect with fans. You've said Bar-Gretz that. Bar is not alone in his assessment. The effective podcast is Sam Comedy. Uh, that's crazy, dude. Second podcast, <laughs> second podcast allowed comedians to experiment with their material in a way that they may not have been able to do otherwise. I mean, this is like, go down. Like, yeah. is that it? Yeah. Uh, you, you can keep you This can is keep Bar- going. This is because, as Bargetsy notes, podcasting has helped connect fans with comics they may not, they might not have found otherwise. I don't even know if I've actually said this stuff or if. No, if it's they're all, making, yeah, yeah. It's something you that's might crazy, say, though. Some you would say, yeah, yeah. You would say that. I think I we mean, all would. That's dude. <laughs> what if? I mean, what if we're reading articles and you're like, y'all are not even writing these no, articles, yeah. I, dude. If I were writing some clickbait website where I needed to churn out a hundred of these a day, I'd just throw it through this software. Yeah. Wow. And then the fact that you can just put someone's name in and the comments and their quotes are like, if you asked me, did you say this? And you go. I, I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. I don't, yeah, like I've talked to, yeah. you know, I don't know. You've done yeah. it's not like I'm, you're like I did. I remember this one time I said it. You're because uh, it's something we generally say yeah, right, about right. podcasts, yeah. as comics, yeah. You know, we oh. would. That's wild, dude. That is wild. What is this called? This is called this is Open AI, and they have a. It's called Playground, where you can just play around with this technology. It's free. You hop on here. I spent hours on this. Making it write stories and yeah. it's it's pretty amazing, dude. Yeah. And that Dolly, the visual thing is just the same. It's just another iteration of the same technology. Yeah. Where it'll just create images, and I'm yeah. sure ultimately you can make videos from it. Is it where you know? wow. if you do like if I if I was writing a book, would it write a book? Like if it was like if it said uh, write a write a book about uh, Nate Bargetti's career. Someone asked me to write a book. I'm just trying to see if I can maybe turn, <laughs> turn it out quick. I tried, maybe yeah, I can turn right. it out tonight. You, know? you can watch all those Terminator long. movies. So we yeah. tell it, write a long book about comedian Nate Bargetti's yeah. stand-up career. So we got stand up here has been on the rise since it started before and regularly in 2009. Since then, he has released two comedy albums, Yelled At By a Clown of Full-Time Magic. And this wrote a little bio for you, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I was going to say screenplay. Yeah. I think you do like a screenplay. All those a down to earth guy with a great sense of humor. His act is sure to appeal. Yeah. To a wide range. So you would just yeah. keep, oh, maximum <laughs> length. So you could do, is now, it? Now there's starting to be some, uh, there's some misinformation in yeah, this. This is one? what's interesting. Bargetsy is a native of Tennessee. He said that his comedy is influenced by his father, who was a clown. He also said that he's a product of divorce and that his, <laughs> par- and that his parents' divorce had a profound impact on his life and his comedy. Dude, you're just guessing. <laughs> what if? <laughs> just make it stop. I never, I, I, you know what's crazy? I've never said this. My uh, my dad was divorced. Stop. Oh, I wow. Swear. Wow. I never talked. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> what if that was like, it's that good? That it's, uh, that How did you know that? You're like, I saw I get uncomfortable. I go, mm <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's funny, huh? Yeah, you're like God, yeah. where where are they finding that stuff out? We don't even talk. About it. I'm like dead, damn it. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's, They're making like movies now, though, it's... where Warner Brothers has this uh, deal with Cinelytic, where they use algorithms to predict a film success based on the film script and then they insert different actors in it and then they can run an analytics thing to see how well it'll do. And that's how they help determine which actors to put in which movie. So it's just wow. the rock every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why the rocks and everything right now. <laughs> Apparently. And then there's another thing called script book that predicts how well a movie will perform based on the screenplay. So this is, they try to make this movie in 2019 they announced that the best actor to play this guy called Fighting Jack, about a Vietnam War veteran, was James Dean. Yeah. Who died in 1955 <laughs> in a car wreck. They said they searched high and low for the best actor, and James Dean was the best choice. So he was going to star in this movie. Yeah. And Hollywood got so upset, actors, real actors were like, that's ridiculous. You know, you can't start doing this. So mm-hmm. they finally pulled the plug on it. 
but they were going to cast James Dean. Oh, they were going to CGI. They could just CGI. CGI. Him? Yeah. Yeah. Deep, deep fakes. Wow. Wow. You can't yeah. just get a James Dean type. You know what I mean? Well, See, but that's what I mean. Set. You're yeah. you're creating a James Dean that's you're using a real guy. I think that's the the, the savior of this is you still want like this yeah. is cool, but you still want to hear from a person like. The person you're going to relate to a person, you're not going to relate to a computer. Yeah, I agree. And so, if a computer tries to be relatable, it's like now the article thing that you yeah. just showed. Like yeah. I, I would be curious to see if if people are like, are there people that are because it does like people write long articles, and you're like, how are you writing these? How, you how do you just these out? just pump it on out? Yeah. Like it's like, and it's. Uh, and maybe it just figures out what you think. I mean, <laughs> like Grammarly kind of changed my life because I'm not good at grammar and punctuation and stuff. Yeah. And so that's pretty cool. Where you just, I'll just that? It's like an app and you just you just write your stuff out and you have it on Instagram. You can have it, you know, yeah. on emails. Oh, yeah. And it just goes in and corrects all your punctuation. Oh, and wow. then it's like it just saves me from stressing out that I didn't put a yeah. semicolon where I should. You yeah. know? So that I do use that. I'm yeah, not, yeah. You know, like yeah. that's to me, that's like a calculator. For mm -hmm. people that didn't go to good school, right? Well, you, yeah. well, you can just tell it to just write write the whole thing for you. Yeah, now I'll just do you that. Yeah. Now, now I don't even have yeah. to do anything. <laughs> so, There's movies yeah. like that you CGI. Yeah. Well, when Carrie Fisher died, they put yeah. her in sure. the last Star yeah. Wars. There yeah. was a Will Smith movie recently where they CGI'd a younger version of yeah. him. Yeah, sure. And oh, really? Yeah. It was, and it's him. It was like the he goes back in time or so I forgot. He keeps slapping himself. Yeah. Just over and over. Yeah. And then uh the Irishman. They show uh, you know, De Niro and those guys. A young De Niro. The younger man. Young Pesci. Yeah. That was all done by that's crazy. And I don't mind that. That's that's you know, that's that's like science fiction. Like this. This is Nate as Forrest Gump, someone on the Nate Land, Chris Cosolino posted this. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, run, Nate, run! I feel like I look like Dustin Johnson, <laughs> well, a golfer. Yeah, you wish. That's very funny. Yeah, but <laughs> so that's obviously. I'll be honest. I'd, I'd I kill that. I'd kill yeah. that force comes body right now. <laughs> <laughs> I already think I have his brain, and I'd kill to have his. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you might as well finish it out. Yeah. <laughs> and who, oh, that's Kennedy. Is that him as Kennedy? Is that what that is? The uh, black and white meet, one? No, he's no, meeting Kennedy. Oh, he's meeting Kennedy. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's obviously fake, but then like that Tom Cruise on yeah. TikTok, you couldn't oh, tell I've the seen difference. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks so real. And yeah. now they're like, that's a national security thing because you can make a world leader <laughs> sure. look like they're declaring war. Yeah. Or yeah, that's scary. That's else. when it gets really Those scary. Yeah. And but the upside is I, I saw this on uh, sixty minutes as I watch that in CBS Sunday morning. Mm. Um, what did that say at the end of that? <laughs> so I just sorry to interrupt, oh. Brian. I just right. told, I told this yeah. software I said write a long dramatic story about struggling comedian <laughs> Brian Bates who kills his more successful comedian friend Nate Bargatze, and it wrote just an awesome story. Yeah, <laughs> it was the early hours of the morning. The only sound that could be heard was the soft snoring of Brian Bates. <laughs> He had been struggling as a comedian for years, <laughs> and tonight was yet another disappointing performance. <laughs> he had killed at the open mic at the local comic club, but when he got on stage, he just couldn't seem to connect with the audience. He was in his own head, and the jokes were, just weren't landing. So far, this is uh, nonfiction. 100%. Uh, as he lay in bed, replaying the night's events over in his head, he heard a knock at the door. He got up to answer, and there was his friend, <laughs> Nate Bargatze, also a comedian. Nate was successful, and Brian was always <laughs> jealous of him. Hey, man, what are you doing here so late, Brian asked. I was just in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by and say hi, Nate replied. The two men sat down and began to talk. Brian told Nate about his disappointing set, and Nate offered some words of encouragement. He told Brian that he was funny and that he just needed to keep at it. But as they talked, Brian's jealousy began to boil over. He looked at Nate, successful and happy, and he just couldn't take it anymore. He snapped, and before he knew that, he was doing before he mm. knew what he was doing, he had killed Nate with a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Brian sat in shock for a moment before he realized what he had done. He 
He had killed his friend, and there was no going back now. He would go. He would be going to prison for the rest of his life. But as he sat there, he realized that this was his chance. He could finally be the successful comedian that he has always wanted to be. He would be famous, and he would never have to worry about money again. It was all thanks to Nate Bargatze, the friend who had believed in him, even when no one else did. And now he was gone. <laughs> Hey, that's amazing. Wow. Not all of that. I think you think that all the time. And I like and this is this if people want to know if you ever think I've been mean to Brian. This is what Brian thinks in his head. And this is this, me telling him be encouraging this him. This is AI generated. And he's jealous. And so he wants to eventually kill me. This is 100% I mean, that's crazy. The only part was you wouldn't visit me at my house. <laughs> that, that yeah. was, but if you do, I have a lamp ready. <laughs> yeah. I used uh, to, I would visit your uh, your apartment. I would yeah, come by to. there. Yeah. Used to be good and friends. You'd be there and jealous. <laughs> yeah. We were, we're still good friends. I uh, hide the lamps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gets, you know, I had to encourage you just as long as I could. <laughs> and then I gave you a full job on a podcast. <laughs> So I don't like what are, you're right. Let me do a little. Let me keep encouraging. You. Here we go. What else do you want me to do? It's about to be a cow reference. I didn't mean, yeah. I didn't mean for that to start stuff. That was just a fun story, dude. You can see how this is fun to play around with. Yeah, oh, you know, that's great. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. That's great. But the deep fake thing, the upside of it is, um, like there was some company in Asia that Asia that made. Um, some type of drink and they wanted Snoop Dogg to be the spokesperson for it. Yeah. So they paid him just to do his face of deep fake image. It looks just like him and he gets the money, but he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to fly to Asia mm -hmm. really? to make the commercial. So that's the upside of deep yeah. fake. Wow. It makes, that makes Snoop Dogg's life a little but easier. I'm it's going to wa it makes his life easier, but it'll water down stuff. If people start figuring this stuff out, you're not going to go like the second you were like, like it'd be like going to see Tupac, and when they did the, uh, the hologram, the hologram yeah. like you're gonna go the first tour to be like everybody's kind of like, yeah, I'll go see what it is. Yeah. But then, like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep going, and then it's like, well, now we have Benjamin Franklin up there, and he <laughs> sings uh, he did Biggie Smalls, and you're like, All right, well, I'd pay to see that. I can check that out <laughs> once. And then, yeah. I know because, but if you're three yeah. years, you're like, I'm not yeah. going. I don't care what you're going to create. Like yeah. it's not real. And you're right. You're like right. I don't. I, I, you know, I'm tired of it's, like. It's a disconnect. It's a disconnect. I want to watch someone the real time. I want to. You want to watch someone that can do something you can't do. Yeah. Like that's why you're going to see athletes. That's why you're going to see all this stuff, and it's like you're amazed at that. Like I'm not amazed that a robot could jump from the bottom, from the ground to the top of the Empire State Building. You're like, you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And then if it's like, it's how many robot. times are you going to go watch it? You're like, it's a robot. You're, mm -hmm. you know, they make a car run fast. You know, I'm impressed by Usain, Usain Bolt beating everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Deep Blue was the original, but even before Watson, that's probably before your time. Yeah, I don't remember that. Deep Blue played Gary Kasparov, part of the greatest chess player of all time, mm -hmm. in a chess match. Gary won the first time, and then they reprogrammed the computer a year later. He played, and the and the computer won. Oh wow! And it was a huge deal at the time. Which again, I thought, well, calculators. Can, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. Wait, he beat it, and then they just redid it. They worked on it. They increased the speed. They worked on different stuff. Yeah, and they played again a year later, and the computer beat him. Yeah, in chess. Did it beat him like quick? No, it was yeah. close. Like he won some some. I don't know what, he, what do you call it and matches games yeah so the, these matches they would play it's they play six games of chess and then it's whoever wins the yeah so the first match was played in philadelphia in 96 kasparov won four games to two mm. yeah he won the match and then uh then it played again the next year deep blue won three and a half to two and a half so there was mm. a one draw wow between the two of them so it was still it's still a narrow margin at that point so but, like if that's the point like if so if you're playing chess with a computer it's like, well, if that guy's so good and he's making no mistakes and the computer's making no mistakes, it's like it almost would be a draw. I guess there's a little, like some, I guess computer. Uh, but there's know. so many moves in chess, eventually you could outmaneuver someone, right? I think so. Yeah. Like yeah. a computer. Because this said the computer was searching to a depth of six to eight moves and sometimes 20 or more moves in some situations. Yeah, that's where the computer has it. It can, it can plot out what all the potential moves yeah. are way ahead and just map them out. 
yeah, in its yeah. head, you know? Well, that's, some humans yeah. can do that on some level, but not. He not probably to, could. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, now you got a robot. You're like, golly, it's better. He goes, oh, he's going to, he's going to draw a lot. They'll be close. <laughs> well, you're mean, like, then what's the point of this robot? <laughs> you're like, I want you to win in four moves. Yeah. I want you to mop the floor <laughs> yeah. with these guys. And that's when the robot goes, okay. And kills that guy. <laughs> with a lamp. With yeah. a lamp. <laughs> with a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> he said that uh, Kasparov said he'd notice unusual creativity in the machine's moves, suggesting that during the second game, human chess players had intervened on behalf of the machine. Oh, really? Basically, meaning they were calling the shots behind the scenes. IBM denied this, saying that only human intervention occurred between games, which was allowed. Like in between games, they could do some tweaking. Kasparov demanded a rematch, but IBM had dismantled Deep Blue after the victory and refused the rematch. He requested printouts of the machine log file, but IBM refused. I'm on his side. Yeah. Although later the company published the logs on the internet. But they could have changed them. They could change. I, I, I'm on his side. I mean, to be like he won the first time and then the second time, why would they not let it go? Like, if you believe in your thing, it's a robot. You know, it's not like, well, he's tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. he wants his you go, I don't know. His parents want him home. Dude, we can't do this. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like uh, he hasn't eaten today. Yeah. He's grouchy. <laughs> like it's they just wanted to be able to do it to say they won. But then and then Watson, a few years later, went on Jeopardy, mm-hmm. took on Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter, and he won a million dollars. So humans take a uh, tenth of a second to perceive the question to hit your buzzer. Yeah. But Watson could do it in eight milliseconds. So it would be like, uh, so they could never even buzz in because he knows every answer. I don't know if he knows every answer, but I think they all basically know the answers. I'll, I mean, Ken Jennings, I think, knows most of the answers. It's just yeah. who can get in quickest yeah. when they give you the prompt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you can't. I mean, the computer has to know all the answers. Yeah, because you pause as a human. You, yeah. You know, you, when you talk, it's got to go to here, to, yeah. out of your mouth. Yeah. Did they beat him at all? Beat the robot? Yeah, they won some. And the robot yeah. got, I think he got Final Jeopardy wrong. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. There's sometimes where I, I watched a couple of these episodes, and, and, and very infrequently it would happen where you could tell, like, it just didn't understand the way the question was worded, and the answer mm. would be absurd. Uh, you know, it'd be it like, what like, is shovel? And you're like, yeah. that's not what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. I <laughs> forgot what the question was, but it's like, this U.S. city, blah, blah, blah. And it answered, what is Toronto? Yeah. Wow. So it, it got some things wrong just because it couldn't yeah. understand it. What an idiot, dumb. dude. What a dumb computer. <laughs> but then later, it went on uh, the Urban Dictionary, memorized Urban Dictionary, and began using <laughs> profanity. <laughs> and he had to wipe his memory. <laughs> <laughs> You know how like people always talk about like uh, sticks and stones break my bones, words don't matter. Yeah. Like it's funny that words are going to kill computers. <laughs> like we've actually yeah. built like a society now where you're like words are not supposed to matter. It's yeah. like it's the actions, and then these computers are like it's going to end up. They're just going to be canceled because yeah. they like they can't. <laughs> You, they can't yeah. like not be just you're like you can't say that anymore man yeah. <laughs> and they, they so, so it's never going to go anywhere like we're going to people can argue about like i'm tired of political correctness you're like it might save us from the robots yep because right. uh, that uh that chat bot that i was talking about earlier it was called tay and it went on it was made by microsoft and it was supposed to engage with people in a casual and playful conversation basically it takes what they say and does whatever yeah but within 15 hours it referred to feminine as a cult <laughs> said Caitlyn Jenner isn't a rural woman but she won woman of the year neither of those phrases had been repeated by the way he just said it on its own he <laughs> said the holocaust didn't happen they had to stop it <laughs> God. It's just God. then it accidentally got re-released on Twitter again during a test and it started doing uh, pot jokes um, and they don't know where, then it got a repetitive loop saying you're too fast please take a rest several times a second so it just blew up people's Twitter feeds if they were following it. So wow. Wow. there's some things that they kind of work out the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He goes, yeah, that, yeah, it's crazy. There's a so there's a so you asked me earlier about consciousness and yeah, there there is a some believe that they'll eventually be able to upload our conscious to a machine, and then it can still be us. We'd be like a cyborg, yeah. a robot, but it would be our brain, our mind, all that. 
there's a company called the 2045 Initiative, and they're developing, um, <laughs> trying to develop ways to upload our consciousness to a cyborg, to a machine. I think they could will happen eventually, and technically we could live forever. Like a RoboCop? Oh, really? Like a RoboCop, maybe? Is that, that what he was? Yeah, I think so. Right? I've never Robocop? seen RoboCop. Oh, that's a good one. Which one should I start First. with? First. Oh, that's it. Stop there. Oh, should I do RoboCop or Terminator? Do both. I robot. I know which Throw that first. in the mix. Too. I would, RoboCop's kind of a little sillier, whereas yeah. Terminator's pretty scary. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Right, yeah. Uh, so, is there? So, is your conscious, your soul? Like, I guess that's what. Well, that's the yeah. big question. That's the big question. Yeah. What is conscious? How do you describe what a consciousness is? A soul. Uh, yeah. No one can really define what that means yeah yeah, yeah well, but a it, lot of people know what happens at the end apparently <laughs> uh <laughs> so the idea is to take whatever that is whatever the animating principle of the human being is download it onto some foreign body yep and then let it just inhabit that yep yeah but mm. like if somebody's a giving person then maybe that cyborg is like just a well you know you're a robot i think so yeah i yeah. think you know everything yeah okay yeah, I think you're aware of the... I, I, I might do it. I hope to God he got a consent to this, to have this happen. Well, know, Ted Williams up. didn't. Oh, right. Man, that kids. whole story is so sad, dude. Now, that's different. That's yeah. Alcor, and that's where they freeze you and and try to bring you back to life later. Yeah. Oh, he's still frozen. Yeah, his head and his body are in Scottsdale, Arizona. Right? Oh, just so mistreated, just like sitting on shelves and stuff. It's just... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It was a, it was a mess. I mean, it's still frozen? Yeah. But, like, it's in a thing? It's just his head? And his body's in a separate one. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Why didn't they put them together? It's a mess. I I don't know. (laughs) I guess they have to do it that way somehow. It was a, they go, we don't have a box big enough. You go, <laughs> we'll just make the box big enough. <laughs> and they, he's too tall. Yeah, he goes, he's too tall. So what do you want to do? You want to, so they go, I'll make him fit. He gets above the head. Just do the knees or something. Like That's the main thing, dude. We need the head attached. So when they unfreeze it one day, they're going to have to reconnect it, obviously. Why is it sad with his kid? Well, I mean, he's going to be frustrated. Uh, there was all c- kinds of... Uh, Man, there were like legal arguments. So like some kids didn't want to do it to him, and it was like, did he want it done? I don't I, think so. I don't know. Oh, and they make it seem like he wanted it done. Well, yeah. how did it happen then? If he did, yeah. Why would so they ever had it? power of attorney when he died? Whatever the nearest kin. I mean, you can decide. Oh, so the kin did it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then there was arguments within the family. I oh, need to okay. read up more about it. It was. I yeah. saw a thing on ESPN. It was a mess. Because I always thought it was him. I thought he's enjoyed life that yeah, much yeah, yeah. that he wanted to come back. Yeah, you know? I did too. Yeah, he did live a good life. Yeah. So this is like you can sign up for this uh, 2045. I imagine that's the year it's going to come out. Uh, uh, that's the goal. They think it'll be it'll be that. Yeah. And so you're, uh, yeah, that you let let you see here and feel by 2021. Aims for robot avatars. Can you pay for this now? Their website says create technology enabling the transfer of an individual's personality to a more advanced non-biological carrier and extending life to the point of immortality. Hmm. And wow. then, so you're just a robot. And what, if, what if that's aliens? Well, some Could people be. think that. Yeah. They think that it's not like biological creatures that are coming here. It's, yeah. They're sending robots. Yeah, they're the aliens. And you're like, and they come here and they're like, oh yeah, we used to be. Like, what if they come here and it's like us going to a history museum? Yeah. And then they just look at us and they're like, you remember that? Yeah. Like, oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. And they've advanced to the point maybe where they don't even need bodies of any kind. They can just exist. Yeah. Just their consciousness can yeah. just exist without bodies. And then what's the yeah? And I guess we just can't wrap our head around what's the point no. of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, I wouldn't mind anybody myself. Huh? I'm signing up. Yeah, I'm doing it. We'll still be doing this podcast. I'll just show up one day. Yeah. It's a cyborg. There, there, <laughs> walk through the walls. I just like we gotta takes do it y'all outside. thirty minutes to notice it. Yeah. We, do we got to open that window? And you, you're you just talk through that window. You're that tall. <laughs> you're just heads through the window and just sitting there like, hey man, still not doing keeps, huh? He goes, no, no. He goes, he goes. 
no nah, i didn't want to do the whole it was that was extra and like so i just thought uh you know I did like, the basic plan yeah yeah you would do the <laughs> so basic immortality plan. but i'm just gonna do yeah. the basics <laughs> yeah the rest yours of just life. turns around backwards a couple of times squirrels still get up in it <laughs> yeah you have to carry, you have a belt of uh, old Irish spring soap around you that you have to wear at all times as a robot. A lot of oil, a lot of just squared like the tin man. Human hair. Oil. Yeah. Like this tin man just goes, you know, still beating it up. You're like, all right, man, I'll see you. Right before you walk, you still like get your bearings before you back up. Like, I don't want to fall. So, oh, uh, if computers ever get to the point like AI where they're smart as us and become conscious, the, it's called the Chinese room experiment. Is basically if you were in another room, there's a guy in that room that spoke Chinese, and everything he asked you, you had a book, you can immediately answer him in Chinese. Mm -hmm. He would think he's talking to someone who knows Chinese, mm -hmm. but would you really know Chinese? Hmm. So a mm. computer, you could program to say answer everything you say, talk to you, but did they really know what they're saying, or is it just a program? Yeah. It's like me singing songs. Yeah. I don't know what these songs mean, yeah, but I can say some of the words. You're singing along with it, and I but I have no concept of the story behind it. Not even processing the lyrics. Not at all. You're just making noises like a parrot. Yes. Yeah. I do that with a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of songs. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've memorized the words, but I don't know. I have there's no meaning behind them to me. Really, mm -hmm. we were merely freshmen. That song. What's that from? Uh, Verb pipe. That was like a song we played like our senior year. Great song. Played our, funny enough as our senior year. I always thought that was funny. <laughs> but we sing that song the whole. That was like every time I, I hear that song, my buddy Moffat. We used to go to Jeff Moffat. We go to his house, and then uh, and he. Uh, and we would listen. We would listen to that song, and we'd sing it. And I still love it. When I was young, I knew everything. And she a punk a who rarely. I always thought is it. And she a punk a rarely ever took advice. That's what I was saying. <laughs> and she a punk who rarely ever took advice. I mean, like all this. Now I'm guilt stricken, sobbing my head on. I seen all this. I don't know what yeah. this. I don't. Uh -huh. I have no concept. When I was young, I'm not thinking about a story. I'm not thinking about. Do you want to know what it is, or are you just do you enjoy? Living I don't know if I'm not like interested this. in it, or if yeah. I care. Uh, I'm trying to get it. Like I watched the Leonard Skinner, like uh, some of the old Southern rock. We were talking yeah. about this weekend. Yeah. Like I'm kind of like get one of like you know like I can see that music back then was it's just so written out, and that yeah. like I kind of like the uh, I guess the art of that. I like that there's something you know. Do you, under, being, do you understand yeah. the sweet home Alabama kind of what? I just know that one part now because the Neil Dine, Neil Young thing. Yeah, whatever. that's almost what made me get into because the Joe Rogan. Neil what does that Young. mean? Ne well, uh, Neil Young was like, I'm pulling my stuff off Spotify because of Joe Rogan, and Spotify was like, okay, because mm, yeah. no one was listening to Neil Young. <laughs> yeah, and then and then someone was like, Neil Young's always been kind of like a problem like that, and then or something, and then in the old sweet home Alabama. They say Neil Young something we don't need. Hope so Neil Young will remember. Yeah, Southern boy. Yeah, Southern man Mark, don't need him around Mark, anywhere. Mark, he had a song yeah. called Southern Man. He had yeah. a song called yeah. Alabama that he, trashed the South. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty extensively. That's kind of his rebuttal. So when I heard rebuttal, yeah. so I heard that and I like I was like, oh, that's okay. cool. Like, okay. and, but I would have never. I mean, when I heard it my whole life, I don't. I never. Yeah. 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 Thought of it, I, yeah, who, I would yeah. probably be like, who, who, they might have been a compliment. Yeah. Oh, they like Neil Young. Well, yeah, kid, right. yeah. Well, Kid Rock just samples it and makes it just yeah. a fun song. Like, yeah, you know, there's no <laughs> like, that is a fun song. Yeah, all summer yeah. long. Yeah, so it's like I don't. Yeah, I yeah. don't. But I don't take. Yeah, I'm the same like way that. on that. Nate and I had a bet years ago. You probably don't remember this. I said that by 2030, half the cars in Nashville would be self driving. By 2030. Yeah. When did you make this bet? Five years ago. Okay. Something like that. And I still stick with that. Not that you're going to be able to take a nap in it, but I think pretty much every new car made now has some self-driving quality. Some form. Absolutely. Some form. Absolutely. Keep not, me in the not, lane. Yeah, but it's not, it's not self-driving. It's going to be – like a Tesla is not self-driving. It's it can, it can do it, but it's not – none of them are like automatically self-drivers. Hmm. And half the cars, there's just no way. I mean, people yeah. are buying you're, – you're buying 2021, 22 cars now, 23, and they're not self-driving. 
They can do. They have some lane assist. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like some function. Parallel of, park. They can do. Yeah, well, that's it. We're getting loose. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting very you're moving gonna, the goalposts a little bit, yeah. right? That's it's what I said then. Yeah, I bet if you yeah. have blinkers and stuff. Huh. What do we say about gas? Like I thought, will Harper ever? Oh, yeah, put we gas talked about in that car? too. Electric and cars. Electric. Car. But I think I will make sure she puts gas in the car. Like I want her to know how to do everything on her own. She doesn't need to rely on every, anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drive and, stick shift. I think yeah, that's important. I'll teach her stick shift. I'll yeah. teach her. Like it's like uh, I want her to be able to do stuff on her own. And uh, so I think I will make sure that she knows how to pump gas. Now, do, will she have a gas car or will it just be like we buy an old truck that we yeah. have? Or, <laughs> like it might be that. Yeah. And then she doesn't have a gas car. Maybe by then she could not have one because it's hard to get to that point. If you get to that point, they start having these cars that are like so safe and like all yeah. this other stuff. And you're like, why well, can't I don't want her out there like texting and all, mm-hmm. you know, all this kind of crazy stuff that you can't always stop them. So you, yeah, then maybe there's like a Tesla or something, you know, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I, I can't say that, but I mean, yeah, she'll be right on the end tail end of it. For sure. Eleanor, based on what we said last week, may not even have the opportunity because most gas stations will be gone by 2035, 2040. She graduates high school in 2040. Oh, really? Yeah. 2040. Wow. 2040. Her wow. robot dad shows up. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, yeah. Where's your dad at? He's in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> I went from yeah. so tall about this window, yeah. now I'm in her purse. You're conscious. I mean, so you're if so if your conscious is the robot, it's just is the robot just like I don't. Where's a plug? Everywhere Rumi walks in, he asks where a plug's at. Like he goes, he goes, "How you doing? Is there a plug near?" And you're like, you're like, I don't, we no one would even want to invite you. You're like, you just you're just always you go to a house, you plug in, you stand in that one spot, stand in like, the corner. It's not even a long, it's not even a long cord. <laughs> he goes, and you're like, hey man, why don't you like circle around, like maybe party? meet some people, and you go. I don't. What if I get stuck? Yeah. Get my battery's been weird got lately. Low battery, I got to go home. Uh, last night you didn't charge for some reason, and so you're just always. You can never. You're asking you know, your friend, "Can I give me the, some of those cheese yeah. balls?" Hey, where they got? What kind of food they got over in the kitchen? He goes, well, "I don't know. Go take a look, man." He goes, uh, "You know, I don't know if I can take the chance." Three inch cord. Yeah. If I leave, someone else might plug it in. <laughs> you're like Frank. Somebody Cast- else takes it. You're like George Costanza trying to use that pay phone at the Chinese restaurant <laughs> where he just was sitting there waiting. Like, oh, how long? Excuse me. How long are you going to be? You still got your thing plugged in? You might find, you know. <laughs> Eleanor's got to walk around with that worry of just, ah, <laughs> oh, my dad just, is, you know. That's funny. Yeah. All right. That's it. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's it. That was fun. Uh, all right. Uh, I w- like I said earlier, I will be at uh, uh, Rhode uh, Island, Rhode Island, New York. I think those shows are mo- uh, sold out or as very close as they can be. And then uh, I'll do the Netflix is a joke festival, uh, May third. I'll be there, and that is I want to say about it's pretty sold out, ninety percent something nice. maybe. It's at the end, so. Uh, grab your tickets to that uh, especially when you come to the show last time I was there that's where I'll be you guys I'm back at the Grand Old Opry this Friday ooh All right. so nice man mm. on that Lori Morgan's on this one so ooh. Lori Morgan yeah oh yeah not Lori Leanne Morgan Lori yeah. Morgan, Lori Morgan. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm in Bristol, Tennessee this weekend at the Blue Ridge Comedy Club. Saturday night, two shows. Come out and see. And the next week, I'm doing the Denver Comedy Underground on uh, May 5th. First time in Denver, Colorado. If you're in the Colorado area. I'm at Comedy Works all weekend after that. But I'm headlining Comedy Underground Thursday night. that's great. Yeah. And the Comedy Works is the best. Yeah. I'm excited. Denver's one of the best comedy towns in the country. So everybody says I've never been there. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Everybody there, they're all just so great. Everybody that runs it, it's a, it's a, it's a good time. Dustin, uh, yeah, I'll be with you this yeah, week, and this week. Uh, very excited about that. And uh, then I'll be with TJ Miller. We'll be uh, filming. He's filming his special at the Tampa Improv um, on the fourth and the fifth, I believe, of May, or the actually that weekend, the fifth and sixth. Yeah. And then I'll be filming my dry bar special in Provo, uh, May twenty first, six oh, right, nine thirty. Right, yeah. So yeah. check May that 21st. out. First. Promo, go to uh, Provo, go to that. Go to Provo, yeah. yeah. I got a lot yeah. of Utah friends. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that TJ Miller, that's why you don't want a robot. 
You ain't going to get another T.J. Miller. No, no. T- that guy's yeah. the most original person I've ever met. I've known him since we have started yeah. comedy. Over 20, or 19 years. 19 years I've wow. known T.J. Yeah. T.J.'s, when I, when I saw him the first time, I, I just thought, I've never, he was the first original, like, I was like, this is the most original person I've ever seen. Yeah, he's amazing. He's Andy Kaufman, which we talked a lot yeah. about Andy Kaufman. He's very week. similar, yeah. We should do a one on, like, originality, like Andy Kaufman. Like, I would like to really get into learn, but Andy Kaufman is, yeah. it's, 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 it's crazy what he was doing. And, uh, and TJ's, TJ's. Yeah, if a robot tried to do what TJ's doing, its head would explode. Like, yeah. he's just, <laughs> he's it's, just he, he don't, another level. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's it's the yeah it's, it's you're same, behind the TJ yeah, package. It's improv. It's, it's all great. this stuff. You can yeah. juggle. Come on. Yeah, it's all over yeah. the place. <laughs> uh, all right. As always, we love you. Thank you so much. Anytime you listen to this uh, again, like I try to. I've been saying more on stage. And I'll say it here. Uh, I will never take this for granted that you guys uh, listen to this. So uh, we will keep uh, uh, coming at it, I guess. And uh, thank you. Love you. See you next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.